All right, people, this is the Union Tapes episode number 13, and it's with Gateshead's finest, Dave Young. In this episode, we talk about the usual kind of stuff, uh, the early days of BMX in the north, working in a BMX shop in the real early days, seeing Mike Dominguez and Eddie Fiola at the first Kellogg's when they uh, came over in 84 and they visited Gateshead, early BFA days, how he developed a way of landing that most other people hadn't figured out yet back then. BMX beat, trekking up to Livingston to ride the first concrete skate park he'd seen. Riding for Vincent, riding with Stephen Laidlaw and Pepe Winder, and we cover a bit about Pepe, a uh, well-known figure from back then who sadly passed. The Ties of Worlds, whole shot contest, or whole shot contest rather, being featured in the legendary freestyling magazine, Getting stranded in Saudi Arabia with Terry Jenkins doing uh, BMX shows and a whole lot more. This is a real interesting one and Dave covers everything and still rides. Enjoy it. (laughs) (laughs) Just tell us where you was born and and raised and sort of grew up and the early stuff really um so born born and bred for Jolie, newcastle um born in gateshead which is just on the south side of the town um grew up in a little place called low fell um and pretty much lived in the northeast all of my life other than the times i've traveled um and did a bit of work overseas riding bikes and stuff like that so um that's about it, yeah. Yeah. Well, what was you into when you was growing up? Always riding bikes. Bikes, yeah. Um, I mean, sort of first bike, seven year old, um, rally chipper. Dad got that for us. Um, and what I remember, it wasn't stock. He obviously bought it second hand, maybe. Yeah. Uh, did this like pretty cool flat custom gold. All right. Paint job on it, and that was my first bike. That's what I. That's what I learned to ride a bike on. First one I crashed on, sprained the wrist, all of that. But it was like <laughs> classic, um, just obsessed with trying to jump it, wheelie it, that type of thing. Evil can evil. Absolutely. Yeah, evil, yeah, you know, what was it, Saturday, World of Sport? Yeah. Evil can evil was like the, the big thing that you'd see on the TV. And there, there was also like occasions where they would have some kind of like sort of um, dirt bike jumping thing going yeah. on. So that was always something that I would be like, just infatuated with looking out for you know yeah so, it was so like, and then, like, then you just be straight out on your bike um trying to like jump it um you know the typical find whatever you can milk stick right it on the a, yeah Aye, pretty yeah. much yeah a piece of wood <coughs> so um you just had that chipper and then did you get into like skateboarding right when that boom happened yep just yeah. typical um you know had like the, the the kind of fiberglass skateboard with a with a urethane wheels and all yeah. that but there wasn't any skate parks so i wasn't aware of any skate parks around by me skateboarding was probably a, i'm thinking probably i was probably about 10 years old by then so okay. like what was I like sort of first, first at 70, so nine, ten year yeah. old 79 uh, yeah so First skateboard, um, it was just something that I rode the streets on, and I didn't know when, like, my dad passed by then, so he passed oh, okay. when I was quite young, he, he died when I was like eight years old, so the kind of bike thing was just like the bike that I had at that yeah. point, the skateboarding thing came along, and, the, you know, like, I do know that there were ramps um, in parts of the northeast, but it wasn't anything that I could access. Or okay. was I was still too young to yeah, like, yeah, even you be could. aware of it, really. You know, yeah, you certainly you know, nothing yeah. in the, the the kind of local vicinity near me. So it was like skateboarding was just basic street skate, like going up and down hills yeah, and stuff hill like that. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that kind of when that died out, like then we had like a couple of years, and then <clears throat> and kind of BMX came around. Yeah, I mean, sort of, uh, I'd kind of obviously grown and got a, got a, a bigger bike after the chipper, and I had, I had typically, uh, we used to get like, uh, so you had the grifters and the, the strikers and stuff like that, but I could, I never got one. I wanted okay. one, but my mother never bought us one. So uh, the next bike I got was like one of those little five-speed things, that you, you know, like just with like racing wheels like and stuff kid, like yeah, that. Like the kids sort of road bike. But you, you pretty much immediately put like the cow horn, cow horn yeah. it was on, 
and there was always like local kids like in you know different like, you know different areas to where I lived who were you know, slightly older than me who had like either grifters that were like chopped out and stuff straight yeah. forks and doing wheelies and all that and you'd be I was looking up to them so my thing I guess was like doing what I could with my bike uh, to try and convert it into yeah. something like that and like where I kind of like lived <clears throat> we were we were kind of like yeah, you know, I guess if you think about the northeast and you think back, you, you think back to like coal mines and this yeah. and the other. Well, because of that, the, the the kind of network around the different little villages or towns, there's a lot of old train lines, and basically we used to gravitate towards those old train lines because there was always a lot of slag heaps and oh, okay, and that would there'd be certain areas that we found out about where where on a weekend you'd see guys going up there on like motorbikes and stuff, so we'd be like, oh, we'll go up there, and then where you could just nip in and try and bomb the banks on your oh, bikes right. and stuff so like early on we were like where we were looking for that type of stuff to do but just because you were trying to copy the motorbikes and yeah. stuff like that you know yeah um, i remember people jumping them them bikes with but cables, like you know yeah. dangerous because yeah, like dangerous. flimsy but yeah. you know like what what are you you know I was, I was a pretty small kid as well at that age so i'm talking like sort of 12 13 whatever tall as well wouldn't they then, um, so. Yeah, just not, over, not yeah. practical for what you, yeah. what you you wanted to do on it, um, yeah. but it served its purpose, I guess, you know. So, so so when was the first BMX that you actually saw? I'm thinking, you know, I was thinking about this when I, you know, watched a few of the other uh, interviews with guys and thinking, well, when did I first see it? What where was it? I'm thinking it was probably the, uh, remember Chips, the, the, mm. the American TV motorbike yeah. cop thing? Yeah. It might have been that. Um, but I all, also, I was, I was on holiday with my mum down in, um, in Torquay one year. And, you know, uh, one of the things I remember buying this, like, Marvel comic or something similar to that. Yeah. And on the back page was, like, a, a, a Schwinn advert. Oh, okay. So it was like this, it was just like it wasn't somebody jumping or anything. It was like somebody going around a berm, but it looked cool because yeah. it was like a guy on a BMX. I was like, "What's that?" You know. So that might have been in a similar era to that chip thing. I really yeah. couldn't couldn't take it back. But that that would be like early eighties. Yeah. You know? uh, so and that, and that that would have been wow. What's that? You know. Probably around about then, um, <clears throat> bikes maybe started appearing in places like the. Did, maybe was just Halfords around then, yeah, something like yeah. that. So I think the I think Halfords used to have the Team Murrays and that's stuff right, like yeah. that in. Yeah, that's it. So me, me and my pal would be like in the town and going looking at going all over the place. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, sorry, yeah, Which is which is like you know it's, it's one of those things. It's like that's what you did, and yeah, that's, that's why I, I really I'm frustrated. Like um, the, the the current generation don't seem to get that. Don't they? Yeah, they don't have that. You know, they just see something <clears throat> online and I will just have that like that. So it's quite bizarre. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> imagine taking the taking away the screen like now. That, yeah. That's because that's what it is. It's straight away. Right? You everything's in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah. what you say is like you see it and there's like a actually a timeline mm -hmm. to your. I like this bike, and then you see someone on one. On one. This is for me. Isn't but, it? Yeah, and then you, you, and then you kind see, of, you it see, on see it, TV. You see it for what it is. You see, and you mm. maybe just weigh out like you know. These ones are a bit better than these, or you, well, then you see I mean? a mag like it. so. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. just it all kind of, and you have to, you had to search it. Yeah, that, that's how yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah, So, what was the? Can you remember the first mag you saw, like a BMX mag? <clears throat> so, um, it might have been like one of the BMX Weekly papers. Um, I remember seeing there was before action bike there was a, a one called os bmx i think bmx official so i might have some, some, something yeah. like that so i might have seen that um but i think i might have already had a bike by then I'm, okay I, i'm not too sure so um and first bike was like one of the catalog bikes yeah. you know the classic black and yellow with the yellow mag wheels flimsy like dirt mud, burner thing yeah, something, like, crunch up, something burner, yeah, yeah yeah just absolute yeah. dog shit yeah. <laughs> but you know like yeah the, the You're first in. one you got it yeah and that you know that was like right you know you right, what gonna do on this and it, it felt like totally weird compared to anything i've written before that and you know later on you work out why it was so yeah. weird because of the, like really <laughs> mega high bottom yeah. bracket um, the really flexy wheels, all of that crap, but you know, it's, it served its uh, purpose at the time, so you know, 
So like the, the, the classic uh, Christmas yeah, present, kind of, kind of, there you go, you've got that. There's a bit of snow outside. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was one of those Christmases where yeah. it was actually cold and a bit of snow, but you were still out on the bike. Yeah. Power mine, who lived a few doors away, he, he got a he got one of the team Murrays. Oh, okay. Um, but he, it's kind of like one of those. He, he got um, he got one without the mags. He got one with spoke wheels. But what I recall is that it, it had a set of bars. You remember they had like more like H bars. They were square, yeah. But his bars didn't have a crossbar on. So his 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 bike was one of the first ones to like he destroyed the handlebars when we were jumping, you know. Well, I don't even remember that. No crossbar. Bizarre, yeah. yeah. But it was like it was a pretty cool looking bike, black. But it straight away it just looked, it had a better geometry than what the yeah. the, the, the mud crunchers yeah, the mud did. Crunchers, you know? I think they're English, maybe. <clears throat> they were terrible, yeah. and they, they had like cotton pin cranks. Yeah. Just you know. Yeah, they just but, yeah, it was it was something. Uh, thinking it might have cost about a hundred pounds with a bike. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, or something like that. I have that. 79.99 in the catalog yeah. like, maybe or 99.99 something like that so yeah yeah, um, yeah it's, it's pretty much uh, what i recall early days like early early days so i'm thinking probably like 82 okay maybe 82 it might have been the 81 or the 82 christmas okay, so uh, yeah. it's like cause i think i think we had bmx's when et came out and i think that was 82 wasn't it? that was 82 yeah yeah, it would have been. Yeah, it would have been eighty two, or I, I assume eighty two. I would guess. Um, so, what did you get after you upgraded that? Did you? Have? Well, first, so in that period of time, we discovered a BMX track, which okay. was in, which, which was in a place called uh, it's a little town called Washington. Um, again, that's about four or five miles from where we lived, and I think the first time we went to the BMX track, um, one of the guys from school, his dad, just piled us all in the barn and took us there. And obviously we were like, wow, I've got to go to this track, you know, and it was like bizarre. So we got there and like um, was a bunch of local guys riding. Um, and the, the, the one that stood out the most was a guy called Gary Prosser. Um, I was kind of like, he was the boy back in the day. He was certainly the, the, the rider in the Northeast who had the attention. And he was on this like, I think he was on a Super Goose at the time. And um, I remember seeing him uh, and he was, Doing flat table tops, three sixties, like look back. Oh, he was doing it all, yeah. it was, This was back then, you know. And um, looking at him, thinking, oh, bit, bit of a big, big guy as well. And uh, turns out, you know, he does a couple of laps, comes over, comes straight over to us, and starts stalling us. Really nice guy. Just didn't give a shit that we were on really crap yeah. bikes, anything like that. And then we realised that just across the field from the track, there was this garage, which was actually um, a BMX shop. Oh, okay. Um, I think it was motorcycles, but it also had bike like BMX yeah. bikes in. So like we were like straight over there, and that was the first place we saw like, re like real bikes. bikes, you know, like everything. And that that's that was like the start of it. Um, you know, like we just right, we've got to come down here, and like and that was like you know, be, you could buy BMX magazines yeah. there. They had you, you're in the, the uh, scene. They, they might have had like sort of American magazines <laughs> and stuff like that. But it was that instant access to like quality parts, you know. So, I, so the the first thing I did was upgrade the bike that I had. And I think the first thing I changed was the stem. I put yeah. a, a something a power stem on it. Okay. Um, would have saved up some money, but doing like little jobs and stuff like that, saved a bit of money. I bought that, upgrade the stem. Next thing I bought was a gold Sky um, Shimano DX pedals. Oh, right. So I'm getting there, but yeah. the bike's still a little crap and. Uh, then a little bit later on, um, we just discovered another bike shop, which was further afield down there near Sunderland. Um, and uh, we, we, we discovered this guy called Peter Dark, and uh, he, had, he had his own bike shop. He was probably he was a few years older than us, but not not like an old guy, but this yeah. guy that was like in touch with what was going yeah. on. And, and he used to... Um, he used to knock out sort of like frames and stuff which were a little bit cheaper than the top top end. So this thing that I got next was like a, I think it was like a, it was made by something like Falcon or something like that. Yeah. It was probably like a, like um, front end was probably chrome molly and the back end was steel memories, but chrome. Yeah. And they looked like. I kinda, remember them, yeah. Kind of looked like a um, Kuahara, like, yeah. uh, like a KZ or something like that. And I, I got that. I got the frame and I got a set of um, Tange. Like ARX forks, okay, yeah, yeah. So straight on, it was like, oh, 
coming together. Yeah. And then, like, for some reason, everybody was uh, just totally um, all over the CW bars. Yeah. Remember those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the crazy So that was the setup. Mm -hmm. And I think I might, I can't remember, you know, might set of spoke wheels, but I can't remember what. Christ yeah. knows, Mombi's cranks, stuff yeah. like that. And that was, but that's, that that's was like that was a massive BMX. It yeah. was a, yeah, I'll, you know, probably be able to give you some pictures of, of yeah. that. <laughs> from, oh, Gary, Gary Prosser, I, I recognise that name. Yeah, He's, Gary was like a shit hot racer. I've, really, um, he was he was a boy, so um, he, he was sort of number one northeast. But okay. we used to, uh, I think one of the first events, like proper events that I went to, um, I think I just remembered this this morning. Uh, we we went on a trip with the the the, the bike shop that I was telling you that next that was next to the uh, the track and it, it was in a place called um, um, Hurlandshaw Centre and it was just in Middlesbrough, which is like Teesside. So it was like it's you know like an hour or so trip and it was an indoor race. Yeah. But Andy Ruffle, um, Tim March, all of those guys were there. And Gary was riding and, and like he, he was riding he was, against those guys. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. and he, he was like holding his own. And there was an article in a magazine where he's like bunny hopping over a, a bench. Okay, maybe Don't that's why I recognise that name. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. got that mag. But Gary was like he was the, the the guy in the northeast. If you if you were a BMXer in the northeast, you knew Gary. Is he the guy that he's been on the internet jumping the cars? Early on, yeah, he's jumping a mini. I think there's yeah, a he's picture a big, of him. he's a big dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. where I, I yeah. recognise. So, so cool. Gary, I think Gary's like maybe similar. He's probably my age. Yeah. So like that that whole early days, like the racing thing, and it was like I mean I was like half his size, and like um, it's like there's no way I'm gonna even get anywhere near him racing. So he's a local legend, but like the so early, early, early. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. If, if you were if you were a BMXer in the eighties, you knew you knew who Gary was, you know, and uh, he he. He kind of, I think he, he rode for the shop, um, that shop in Washington that I was on, it was a place that used to be called Isaac Henderson. They were like, let's say, a motorcycle dealer. And then Gary was from like um, South Shields, which was down near the, the coast. Okay. <clears throat> and um, there's another shop down there called uh, Conway's Cycles. So and then whatever happened, and Gary's, you know, ended up riding for Conway's. And he was part of a crew from down there, you know. All and right. So, but again, very much, you know, focused on racing. Then that was his thing. But he was a, like shit hot dirt jumper. Yeah. But it was just jumping, you know. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was all BMX. And I, so back then, it, like for me, I very quickly kind of like figured out I'm not really any good at racing. I maybe just did a handful of. Like, oh, you races. did race, did, yeah. Very briefly, but didn't enjoy it. And but I used to go to all the races. So in between the motors and the yeah. finals. Okay. It's probably the same story yeah, as yeah, all yeah, doesn't exactly. do much at the same time. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's let's jump. hit the jumps, yeah. you know. And that's what it was about, you know. Um, and yeah, that's and, and kind of like people would be taking notes because I, I could jump, you know. And yeah. it's like just mix it in with them, and it was kind of accepted that. You know, it didn't didn't matter, be, that, didn't matter that I didn't race. Yeah, it's gonna know? be a jump section in the middle. Where I they? think I think the. The difference with a lot of the people who raced is a lot of. The, I mean, some of my pals. They didn't have parents taking them and they still went into the race and did it. But a lot of the guys that I know who, who were like banging the race and they were the ones who were being taken to the to the events by the parents, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like it's quite different from me. Yeah, yeah. It's like make your own way and get yourself there, you know. More sports sports type mentality. Yeah, right? I think just if you're gonna if you're gonna go and do like what what was it like you used to do like three motos and then semis and then finals, yeah, something like raced, yeah. depending yeah. on yeah. like you needed somewhere to like rest up, or yeah. like, um, yeah, true. You know, you need like maybe you, just, you need, needed a bit of kit, you with needed you help, to yeah. work on your bike. And yeah. if you didn't have any of that, you were always going to be a, at a bit of a disadvantage. Yeah, hundred so, percent. I mean, by by then, I was probably like fourteen, fifteen, and um, like as I said, like, like Gary and a few of the other guys, they were like getting up there, and I was like, nah, I'll just stick the jump and hanging out. Yeah, well, it was there other tracks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> so, so, Wash um, the one at Washington was the first one that I recall, and shortly afterwards there was a one built in Gateshead in, a, in an area called Windy Nook, which is way up. It's like way up on on the hill, kind of like. And uh, we used to ride that because that was closer. Um, it was a bit of a. It was one of those dolomite tracks that was built. You know, like I think a lot of them went up around about the same time. 
And uh, I mean, it was pretty lethal when it was first done. What's that? The stuff it was made of? Yeah, like yeah. the surface. Okay. It's like a dollar. So it was like a like a, it was pretty much like that color, like yeah, you know, like colored when we were first done and like rolled really flat and smooth. And um, when it was first built, I mean, it was like lethal because it had this like mega start hill straight down, and they had a jump literally a few meters from the bottom of the start hill. It was oh, like a pyramid thing. thing. Yeah. And then another one at the end of the first straight into a downhill berm. Then it came around into a tabletop, then a 180 berm, and a few sets of little doubles. And the track was all on like side of a hill, so it was like quite a so fast track. Tracks, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember like being up there one Sunday morning, coming off probably the first hospital visit. Oh, really? Um, yeah. yeah. Grind the head down the inside of the berm, um, kind of like knock yourself out a bit, a little bit concussed. Hospital was literally up the road, so I was like kind of... Oh, you just walked there? Up there. I, th I can't remember if somebody took us up there, that kind of thing. Just, uh, but like... You get stitches? About 15, something like that. A few butterflies in there. Okay. Like, so it was like, but that was that kind of first kind of memorable thing. Yeah. At the track, you know. <laughs> was like, uh, that your first real digger as well, I guess? Uh, not, not really, because I'd done my cell in plenty of times. Just on When I was younger, on, yeah. on like, on the ship my bike and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, I was right. kind of like, it's part and parcel of riding yeah, yeah, bikes, you know, get used yeah. to it, you know. So yeah, crash and burn. <clears throat> so who else was a uh, the local crew at, at this point in time? I think by that time I'd, I'd we'd figured out sort of some of the local guys at the tracks. Like so, um, there was a guy guy that lived in Washington that I spent a lot of time with. A guy called Steve James, who was a shit hot racer. He was like one of the fast guys, and he had the cool. He, he was a, he, a couple of years older than me, I think. So he, he had like a little bit more, uh, he was a bit more resourceful financially, you know, he yeah. had a bit of money, so he, he was able to have the, the bike, you know, he had a, he had a, I think the bike that I recall him having at that time was like a talker, but it had like flight cranks on, um, you know, like really good sort of um, alloy rims. Yeah. Um, just all the cool parts. Flight talk. cranks back then was... Yeah, I mean, it's, was if, you, big, if you had flight cranks, you, you, had a, you, had a, you, had a, you had the business, like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it was a few years before I got flight cranks yeah. and stuff like that. So, but yeah, so Steve James and had a lot of like pals who at that point in time, like pals who lived pretty local to us who weren't the riding as well. But we kind of like it was a bunch of us who who lived in the same like group of streets. Like instantly, were attracted to freestyle. Yeah. So we we got uh, one of the guys um, <clears throat> bought that. Uh, you know the the. The book, Horror's book. Yeah, book of freestyle. Mate, yeah, so. yeah. And um, <clears throat> we, we kind of, we got that and we instantly like thought, oh, well, we can learn some of it. Well, you know, like thinking you've got to copy yeah, yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so we, everybody to learn the right, like do rollbacks. And then it was like a case of doing 180s, one eight, like doing 180s into rollbacks and, you know, like the, the 540 out, that yeah. type of thing. 360, you know, like the, because it was just, oh, well, yeah, we'll give it a go. Yeah. And that was that was back on the first bikes as well. I think that, that was probably back on the first bike that, that I had. That was know, early yeah. that book, yeah. And um, so, and, and I think it was just because it was such a mission to get to the the, the BMX track. It, w it wasn't like just down the road. It was yeah. like it was like up and over the hills and around and down and then another area. Then it's all the way back, you know. And it was like so. A lot of these guys just wanted to ride. They the just wanted to ride, yeah. So it was like you know just. In the car box at the end of the road, that type of thing. Yeah. And so I guess the freestyle just me, you know, the flatland freestyle was just like natural. And yeah. I was, like, think back as well, like probably the influence of some of the stuff in the BMX actions, like the American ones. Like I remember jumping off garage roofs and stuff like that, oh, just yeah, the flat, yeah. you know, and uh, like that. As far back as that is like pretty, you know, it's pretty mental, like you know. Yeah. But, uh, <clears> yeah. Did you see? Um Horror at the NEC when that was on TV. Just on the TV, then. yeah, right. just on the TV. We knew, we knew some somehow we knew what was coming on the TV. Okay, so we did see that. Yeah, that like, seems to Whoa. be like one of the things that people saw. And like, <clears> I mean, it just blew everybody was away because yeah. it, it was just like such a dialed, like routine. That, you know, the stuff that he was doing was just like whoa. Yeah, and it, and and I think it was still really early. Um, and you know, people were just getting VCRs and stuff, yeah, you know, in the yeah. homes. Yeah. Thinking back, so it wasn't like you could, 
get a tape of some American riding. It was, it was really unusual to see any footage of any of the early yeah. skate parks, any, you know, stuff that was red and know that it was coming on TV or wasn't like, oh, your pal gave you a tape. Because the stuff it wasn't, wasn't there, yeah, wasn't, yeah, it wasn't. you didn't see it. So I remember, so, remember the old <coughs> Tinker Jurez in the skate park. Yeah, with, yeah. With the I, I think that was what I saw first, and then Haro NEC. I think was the first time that most people had seen a quarter. Yeah, no one had yeah. seen a quarter pipe yeah. like actually in use, other than in a magazine. So I, yeah, I, that kind of set people. So pretty shortly after that, the I think maybe the following year they had the Kellogg's series. Yeah, so that like eighty four. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, um, and that, that was one of those things that went around the country. One of the rounds yeah. was in Gateshead. Okay. So it was in a place called Wickham, um, Wickham Thorns Track. So they built a track um, specifically sort of for that event. And they, they built that particular track where they ran it in both directions. All right. But again, it was up on the side of a hill in the northeast of England. And I think it was like, it might have been like May time. Cause I, I was, Weather was crap, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just leaving school, um, I think. But what what the big thing was is like they built this freestyle area, which was basically a bit of tarmac <laughs> again <laughs> perched on the side of a hill. Um, you know, really, like I was like bare to the elements, you know, and like uh, and on the day it was like it was off and on showering and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I think I remember that. But, that you know, we were going to get to that track. We were, we were going to be at that event from the first thing in the morning until yeah. the last thing at night. And we rode there, me and my pal Steve James. And uh, I think I think Steve might have, he possibly might have been riding, like racing. Oh, okay. he, he was a really good racer, you know. So, But I just wanted to be there and see, see like, see the pros, the, the, pros, the yeah. freestylers and that. <clears throat> I think I'm thinking back, I might have had a, a custom frame at that point as well. Um I mentioned Peter Dark and uh he 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 built this frame. Um it's some you know, college class thing that oh, did well, or something actually, like real that. custom frame, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I remember I'm pretty sure I might have had that bike at that time, that that frame, you know, and it was like uh thinking back, like one of the things that uh that, that we always thought was a little bit off with it, it was had a quite a steep head angle. It was probably about right for <laughs> back now, you know. Yeah. But um I always I always recall like just being there and it was obviously the the whole of the area was circle, everybody was there, lots of my pals were there, and then all the pros were there all of a sudden and uh like some of the, the British guys as well who were like all a bit like yeah, you know like okay but it, it weren't really mixing but the person that actually spoke and socialized with everybody was fiola oh, okay and uh and i was like oh can i get a go, get a go on the ramps and that he was like yeah come on you know and like a couple of the the other guys that were on the tour were like oh, who's this dude you know have like, you, know, you ridden the way. quarter pipe before then i might have maybe maybe um think again the era is yeah. difficult to place um, because there wasn't a lot around, yeah. um, I might. I'm thinking one of the shops um, in in South Shields may have had a quarter pipe, okay. like something five foot wide, six foot tall, that you know would. Yeah. Um, so I think maybe I might, I maybe done that a little bit, but okay. and then um, I think by then we would have been riding the uh, the, the exhibition cobble cobbled underpass, oh, which right. was the, yeah, the big yeah. vert okay. walls. So that was. So which which was where we kind of like learned to do like a, a like a one eighty on a bank, you know, like that's you know like like an aerial, you know. What, that's... what was the crew like when you used to ride there? Was there a big big amount yeah, of BMX yeah, there? A lot, there, bunch, yeah. bunch of us yeah. used to go there and that ride was the crazy it from, days, from different right? different parts of like the northeast. He used to travel up to go there. there yeah. and, oh, have you seen so and so? Yeah. He's getting, he's getting two bricks from the top, you know. Okay. Like, it's like like you talk about the the, the marks on the meal, meanwhile wall. Yeah. There's, there's marks, there's stuff. Oh, up is there. it? Yeah. I think there might still be there as well. Oh, is it? <laughs> so it's like it's the same thing. And but like you know that that because of where that is, that those those cobble banks, it's it's literally the the, the exhibition skate parks like like there. It's on the same bit of land almost, you know. Yeah. And uh, so there's a bit you know there's more modern videos of like Kieran um, like sort of doing flips out of the, the end of the, oh, okay. the cobbles and stuff and that you'd be able to see that stuff on the internet yeah. Sure. but uh yeah it's bizarre so it? was that in Gateshead then that's, that's in Newcastle that Newcastle one. yeah okay. um I go again going back in time you know in terms of like uh that first year uh one of the places that we gravitated to we knew about this this underpass in Gateshead it was called the five bridges 
and it's it's basically it's like a walkway on the middle of a roundabout um, and we knew that under there there was this 45 degree bank which basically just the, the pavement comes through and then it's fenced railed and then there's this bank goes down a flat and that's all covered over like by the the flyover that okay. goes into the city you know and yeah. the castle and um, I remember that first, I think it might have been that first Christmas, me and my pal, who were like frustrated and not being able to ride because it was wet. We thought, oh, we could, we could ride down the gates there and like go under the underpass. And there's actually a bank that you can yeah, go and yeah. carve around. So that was, we were probably doing that in like, what was that, like 82 or something? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. And I always recall there was a guy um, <clears throat> who used to turn up all the time and he was like this old, like all this original sort of skater dude who was much older than us you know but he had all the like proper gear yeah and he was doing like layback sort of like slides, slides on the stuff. bank and stuff like that. i was like oh who the fuck's this guy you know it's like quite bizarre but yeah, rare to be skating at that point in time as well yeah well yeah it's, it's like uh, 80s and he was just one of the ones that kept, kept on going, doing it yeah. you know so yeah so <clears throat> in terms of like that actual having a go on the actual ramps it was a big thing and then actually to see like dominguez um fiola Horror was not an around Sorry, there. Yeah. Um, Bob Morales was yeah. there. Um, I think out the in English guys, sort of Jenkins, yeah. Terry, yeah. who's still a good pal. Yeah. Um, Andy Irwin. Yeah. Uh, I think Craig was riding. No, Craig wasn't in, in the first one. Chris Young was in the first one. Right? Or was it not Craig? No, nah, Billy Stuffle, he was in the first yeah, one. Yeah, 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 right. All right. Glyn Lewis. There you go. Um, I can't think of who else. Uh, what, what Mason, 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 Mason it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, what was the? Did you watch that event? Like, how did they? Yeah, run, well, I was there. I was like, how just, did they run that freestyle <sighs> contest? Like, I honestly can't remember because I, I can't figure it out was, how they, it was how they did it. Like, like just clicky. It was. Like, <laughs> I don't, I was I don't there, yeah, well, it just didn't. I don't. I don't know. It, it wasn't inviting. Not really, and I, I, I've got a pile of photographs in the house from from that, which I, I, I actually don't know how I have them because I didn't take them. Oh, okay. <laughs> At some point over the years, somebody's went, "Oh, there's a pile of photographs," and they're of that event. I'll, I'll turn, I'll scan some and send you some down. So well, Fiona was cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, just just approachable, you know. The 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 American guys were then. Dominguez, was he was he about or was he? Yeah, yeah, he was, he was kind of like he was young about, then, wasn't he? He's, Yeah, I think. I think Similar age to me, you know, oh, really? so like Before 50 or so okay. at the time. So, um, and he had the uh, I remember he had the sport, the sport, yeah, yeah. So, he's riding that, but he was like, he's also riding, I think he was riding Horos, um, Master as well, or it might have been his, I don't yeah, know, yeah, yeah, that's right, because it's pink. Because I think they, yeah. they had to do Flatland as well, yeah, it was like the that's it, yeah, kind of like a bit bizarre. But I think they, they weren't back hopping through the cones in that one, were they? No, I don't think so, yeah, that's bizarre. Yeah, but that freestyle area looked too small in was tight. almost all of those events. Yeah, I mean, in, in that one in particular in, in the at Wickham it was it was ridiculously That's small. I, I mean, I'm surprised they even bothered. Yeah, know, like I'm surprised they didn't turn up and go like, can't really do anything on the side of here. But you know, but yeah, they made a go of it. Was that weren't the one where they did the high air? Was it? No, I don't think so. Okay. I'll no. dig that out. I'm not going to look for that one now. <laughs> so was Pepe around at this point? Didn't no, I hadn't. I I hadn't met Pepe at that point. No. Um, so I mean, this is like eighty four. Yeah, it's early. Well, kind of early um, eighty four. He, he, he was he was definitely a, he was he right, was about, but I, but, yeah. but he wasn't uh, he wasn't over in sort of Newcastle or anything. Um, it was sort of like I think. So that would have been before the summer. That would have been, I think, it was like May time. So I was like just getting ready to finish school and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then through through that summer, um, just through the little, I think we we had like the little BMX club by then, like the little freestyle club. Um, and uh, was basically we got this like this community hall where we we, we had one ramp. I think it was the ramp that was at the bike shop in South Shields. Um, they they just gave us that so that was brought up on a trailer or something like that and we stuck it in this little hole once a week one night a week you know and that oh, was okay. that was what we you know that's what we had to ride and that was the focus yeah uh, like, you know doing that so that was over that eighty four summer and during that period of time because of the club we started doing little demos like at other youth clubs and stuff like that All right. and um, 
I think that's how that, that would have been. So the first BMX beat would have been that year, I think. Yeah, eighty four. Yeah. So the back back end of eighty four, I think. Um, so by then I'd rode a little bit more like quarter pipes and did it. All right. You know, the freestyle thing was yeah. was the thing to be doing, and um, I think I might have got I might have got my first performer by then. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, they um, came out in '84, so I and, think and it was through it was through doing those like little shows <laughs> in other community centres and youth clubs and stuff like that 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 I get a call off of this guy. Who was lining that, that work up for us, like the, the the demos and stuff like that? And he was, oh, there's, they're doing this TV thing, um, and it's all about. I think it was, <clears throat> I think it was, um, it was all about regional TV stations. Okay. So it was Border Television in Carlisle, and obviously in in my local area it was Tyne T's Television. So they needed two representatives for, oh, okay. for each, and I think that's how it was done. Right, well, makes sense. Yeah. Um, so they, that's how I ended up going across there to that, which was like, you know, like so out of my comfort zone, like, you know. And that was out um, of the blue, right? It's like Totally out of the blue, so, just like no preparation and like, I'm, I'm, next thing I know, like. Going to be on TV, like well, that's it. Well, like, I just didn't even know what to think. Didn't didn't really, I was going to some freestyle contest and I was representing Tankley's television. I was like, okay. oh, I'm way out of my depth, you know. But, you know. Whatever, I'll take. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. take it. I'll and take you, it. so at this point in time, you'd only really ridden that quarter in that club. Maybe, a, yeah. Pretty there's much. no skate parks up there. No, none. In, none there's in, a cobble uh, bank, and there's a cobble banks and stuff like that. Like you know, like you know, you got little shopping precincts with little banks and yeah. stuff. And the only like freestyle comp or anything like doing stuff was the little demos that we're doing, and then maybe having the little street contests and like. Um, I remember we did this like King of the Square thing, like on oh, right. Cobble so Laidlaw, and everybody would, all of those guys, uh, the, the local guys would have been there, and it was like just just like a laugh, just having yeah. a blast, but like, oh, we'll give everybody like a, a minute to do that little bit. Local, like local, local contest. That was kind of like you could say it was the first street contest. Yeah, okay. Because it literally was a cobble bank. Oh, you know, right. that, was, that was the focus of <laughs> 360 and or, you know, tyre tap and yeah. that type of stuff, but. And then, then, so then, going to that first BMX beat was like, pfft, you know, I was going, full blown. Yeah, I, I just blew my. Well, you know, I'm like, so I'm, it was in Carlisle, which is only <coughs> you know an hour away from Newcastle Street West, um, about an hour and a bit on the train. Um, so I'm doing that, traveling over there with this other guy, um, <coughs> which was uh, another guy who wasn't really a freestyler, but for somehow he got got, he got, he got asked to do it. A guy called Ed Sedgwick, who was okay. I only ever knew him as a racer, but I was thinking, how are you going to pull this off? Because you're, you're not really much of a freestyler, and you, you, you miraculously uh, sprained his wrist somehow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's say. But anyway, we arrive at Call Island, we've got to make our way to this hotel, and I'm like, fucking hotel? I'm like, I've never stayed in a hotel, I don't think, by then, other than if I'd been on holiday with yeah. So <clears throat> and then you're meeting all these people who you've never met, and then all of a sudden, all of the riders that you see in the magazines are there. Ruffle, everybody like that. I think I've, I've met Andy before. Was he when he when he, he did was, show he was, and race? Well, like, yeah, but I, I, he, I, they used to come around like different parts. Well, they used to tour the UK and do like little teaching things at the tracks and that. Was so, it the Ford thing? Was that? It, it, Nah, it nah, could have been, yeah. could have been, but it was when he like rode for um, mongoose, yeah, Amico, mongoose, yeah. whatever. So, so I kind of like met him before, but you know, he didn't, okay. he didn't know me or nothing yeah. like that. It was like, but yeah, it was that, that was just like in at the deep end, crack on, and then it was like you're actually gonna have to go and do a, do like a contest together as well, and that was bizarre as well. It was like you know riding the ramp and the ramp looked terrible. How that bad was, was that ramp? Yeah, it was bad. It so. looked. So but it was bad. like, I mean, it might not have even been five foot wide. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you just think, how dangerous. But but it's what it's what, it's what there was at the time, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, everybody just got on with it. And uh, th that's probably when I first met Pepe, really, oh, oh. you know. Oh, yeah, because he was from Carlisle. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And he, he, by then he was like, he'd, he'd been doing so much stuff. Like, uh, he'd been doing a lot of shows. I think he'd, he'd done contests around the UK and maybe he's... Maybe he's been in some of the the magazines by then, or got some attention anyway. Yeah, because he stood out from an early. early yeah, season. yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then Carl Isley was like everybody knew Peppy. Yeah, you know? like whether you went into BMX or not, you you knew him because I think they they always did a lot of 
local TV stuff, you know. Yeah. So was he was a fair, yeah, fair like, enough. he was a charismatic guy, wasn't he? So oh, yeah, he, such a strong personality yeah. and a you know likable guy, lovely yeah. guy. You know? So was BMX beat was before the nationals that you went to? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, oh, it, it was, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first yeah. one. Wow. Yeah, so that was, uh, and I, I can't even remember how badly I rode in that. Like, but it was, it was daunting, you know. It was, yeah. Pff, because you had this, it, it was outdoors. It was like that's it. Yeah. You, they had this big sort of like uh, stand with loads of people that they shipped in, like and uh, obviously telling them when to cheer yeah, okay. and crowd. It was like God, nightmare. It's kind of like bizarre, and and it just seems so cheesy now. But I guess for the time, it was like you know acceptable. Like, yeah, yeah. Didn't so, know. I, I I don't. I was really young then, so I don't even know what. Yeah. About it, but. Um, so yeah, definitely. I mean, it's the type of thing that I would have put on the TV and watched it. Yeah. Had I don't know, you know, of course I would have. Yeah. Do you know it, what I mean? Yeah, it's like the it, Kellogg's yeah. thing was such yeah. a big, like the the, the the little feature on it. So the NEC thing was a race, wasn't it? Yeah. And but the, it just had the freestyle demo in the middle that's it, of the yeah. part well, of it. So. I've seen footage recently of other people riding that freestyle area. So I don't know whether that was a demo or they had a little event there or what, but there's like, I think Andy Preston's doing some stuff there and some other other guides and I've never seen that before I only see that recently where was that at um, I think oh it was not Andy Press and Mike Pardon it, no but they, it was, they used it to was do right, this little it was, TV it was, see, like, it was pre it was when Bob Haro did that that oh, demo yeah. it was in that oh really in that right. area there but um, that was I'm sure it was Andy Preston and it was before I think he was even sponsored it looked like it was before he was sponsored yeah, yeah. he was on a quarter angle still mm. um but yeah, yeah. But the Kellogg's, to me, looking at the Kellogg's now on BMX Beat, the Kellogg's definitely looked better, even mm -hmm. though it both had its own issues. Yeah, yeah. The Kellogg's yeah. seemed more like a thing, you know. I think yeah, maybe just it, it had a little bit more structure in that. It had the the racing element to it, so whatever structure had already existed, maybe, yeah, yeah, I, maybe, maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, both, both seem to suffer with not giving enough space to people. Though. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, but it's, you know, thinking about it, you know, they're generally organised by people who didn't yeah. ride bikes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah. one of them. That's how it goes. You know, yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> it's like, kind of. But, so, so how, how did you end up starting to go to nationals then? So, um, like again, just connected to the fact that we had that little club thing going and. Um, it purely it, it came down to like um a couple of the lads that 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 rode a couple of brothers called uh lee and nicky smith their parents pretty much um they, it was down to them really like they, they were like right we're gonna get a van and just sh shove yeah. everybody in it and take take you down there's uh so obviously they would have been in in touch i think they were originally into the local racing bmx club and, the, and I think the lads, Lee and Nicky, like again, just drifted towards yeah. the freestyle. Yeah. So hence us getting the, 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 the kind of um, the community hall and putting the ramp in and just going from there, really. And they, they were more interested in that. So Willie and Jill Smith, um, who, who were the parents, uh, decided they would they would take their sons and half of the, the northeast in a minute. How many people were in that van, you think, I guess? <laughs> And I guess uh, <laughs> probably way over the, uh, the the recommended limit, you know. It was just a flat, like a van with no seats. I have them on a, a bunch of different vans, you know. Pile them like in. Lots of different ones, pile them in, throw Excellent. the bikes in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that we found out that there's going to be a series. And um, yeah, we're going to go at the first ones in Nottingham. So we, we did that, and a bunch of the lads, a lot of the local lads, all did well, you know. That just, just getting stuck into it and riding and um i'd had that little bit of kind of like i guess experience at the bmx beat the year before um so i was pulling it together a bit more then you know and i had like decent bikes by then and um you know i entered 16 plus expert and won won that and i think at the time there wasn't a pro class it was a master class or oh, whatever right, it was yeah. above so that was like um like a bunch of the names, uh, like Simon Keffert springs yeah. to mind. I remember that, the not knocking them on because I remember I'm boosting out of the quarter pipe and doing this huge foot plant on I've the seen wall. Seen a picture of it, yeah. 
which was just like, what the f Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, and that was like one of those moments where you just go, what? Yeah, what's you happening know? here? Yeah, um, out of the box. I can't remember. Yeah, Pepe would have been riding in that class, I would have th thought by then. And by then, he would have been a pal, like, you know. Yeah. Um, he kind of like started coming over to Newcastle, or we would go over to Carlisle. Um, yeah, so that was that was. The I, first. I didn't realise that Carlisle was so far from where you was. I thought it was closer. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's, it's about sixty or seventy yeah, miles. Pretty far, yeah, pretty far. Yeah, it's not. It's not a ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Unless it's got an engine, like you know. But uh, yeah. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> yeah, no, I didn't. I, I assumed like. That you guys lived like five close, miles close. away from no, each other. No, yeah. no, it was a bit of a distance, you yeah. know. So it was like, so like, um, <clears throat> one of the things that I did in Newcastle, um, they used to have this, um, this, this two weeks of the year in the summer um, on this this bit of land just outside of the city called the Town Moor. Um, they used to have this like exhibition um, event and. Uh, a couple of years on on the road, and it, this is really close to where the the exhibition skate park is, and the the cobble bank and all that. So up in, up in the, uh, the the sort of park area there, the, the, did this big sort of huge event where you'd have like I don't know, like the you know the white helmets and you know the, those motorcycle display teams oh, yeah, and, yeah. and circus type things yeah. and all of that. So like this 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 year like. And the guy that was getting us to do all the demos around the youth clubs, and I was oh, he's fancy doing the uh, summer exhibition, you know. So that's, I think that's when me and Peppy and um, Stephen McIntosh started oh, yeah, coming yeah. over. So they came over and did the shows with us for for the week or two, you know, and like that's when we sort of like jazzed that's a bit when you really more. bonded, yeah. And uh, yeah, that was that was like the early early freestyle days, you know, um, and then that just. Just starting to like you know make friendships with people from outside of the area. Yeah, where where was Mackie um, from? He was Carlisle as well. Okay. He was he was he, he rode with 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 Peppy because I think they had the same sponsors for like a number yeah. of years and because um, he was really good. It all right? started there was a, there was again it was like a, a motorcycle dealer who started selling BMXs and they, you know that's yeah. that's that's how they started doing shows and doing all that. And, yeah, yeah, so that and I think I think just from that that sort of. Um, that that year, that eighty five year with the national series, I know Pepe came to some of the events with me. From I think uh, I was riding for like a bike shop in Newcastle at the time, and uh, but I was working in the bike shop and riding for them. Uh, sort of, uh, they would give us bikes. Oh, you worked in the bike stuff. shop. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I did that for about a year. Like, so. how was that? Was that in the yeah? Boom, it was. I mean, it was boom in the time. Boom, yeah, it was. You know. It was, just BMX, pure yeah. BMX. It was, well, it was, again, it was like a, it was a motorcycle dealer, yeah. Kawasaki, um, and they, they like all the motorcycles were up on the first floor. Uh, workshop was through the back, BMX store on the ground floor, oh, and it was. It I was, bet that was great, wasn't it? It was pretty big, yeah. It was huge, and it was like you know all of the stuff that was coming. It was like you know when all of the everybody was making freestyle frames. Yeah. you know what I mean. So it was like, it was just like. Like going to a sweet shop every day, yeah, you know. Great. So it wasn't like work, but it, you know, it was it was kind of like you, you ride to work, ride home, ride all night. Yeah. Ride to work, ride home, ride all well, night. Well, I didn't know you were working at the BMX shop. Did yeah. so. Um, yeah, I did <clears throat> and uh, and that that year I did that national series and won the series over that year. Oh, you won the whole thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. overalls. Yeah, so and, and my pal did uh, lad that I used to ride with Tony Hardy, who was a shit hot flatlander. And he could do, he could ride ramps a little bit as well, but uh, he was like really good. He he won he won pretty much every contest um, throughout that year that he entered. I Whereas I had a few off days, like, yeah. and um, but I still won the series just because of the you know I won a few and was consistently yeah, constant, yeah. top in it, placing in the top few. Tony was in like the I think it was like the the younger group than me. He was like a year or two younger than me, so. But um, yeah, I mean, it, the, sort of from what I recall, first national was like Nottingham. Second one was the Eden Bridge in, yeah, in Kent, yeah. uh, which was a mission because me and Tony travelled there alone. Came down on the train, I was like dead. I was like, <laughs> and just blew, blew, blown away by the whole like sort, sort of like too far from home. Yeah, tired, overwhelmed. 
Overwhelmed, yeah, mm. and uh, yeah, because I remember arriving and like so many riders I'd never seen or met, and I can't remember if I placed anywhere or not. But I, knew, I know Tony won. Oh, like, did he? Yeah? Well, class. So that was buzzing to go back home, like with that success, you know. And, uh, third one might have been somewhere like Leeds. Um, I remember traveling down. Peppy came down with me and the guy that used to manage the bike shop that, uh, and then after that, I can't remember the rest of the year. You yeah. Know? Um, and that was that was whole shot fight. Fight. was it so whole shot whole shot was that was I there was a whole first whole shot was 84 I would I was there but I think I'm, I was just there watching maybe okay well, I was going to ask you about that yeah, yeah. so that was the one the Craig one yeah yeah I'm, I, I can't recall whether I rode or not God, really it's just too <laughs> it's too long yeah now, it's right? a while back so but, what, uh, did Pepe and Mackie have that must have had their own ramps? Surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so I think just it was like Pepe. Um, they, they they had access to the the ramp which the the shop that they were riding okay. for, and there, there was some kind of hook up with with Amico at the time as well. So they had something a shop like thing, that. something like that, something similar. Yeah, but again, like the, Carlisle didn't have any skate parks or nothing like you know. Same as Newcastle, it was like, yeah. So like, Pepe was ahead of his game, man. You know, yeah, hundred like, percent. Considering, you yeah, know, he didn't. He wasn't local or close to any parks or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, it was interesting stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, Pepe. Well, I would have loved to hear that story. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, fuck. Um, so your GT, you, you wasn't actually on GT. No, you, no, no. It was no, just through no. the shop. So, <clears throat> um. Quite quite funny. So uh, I, I kind of I, I liked the GT. I got on with it, went, like riding wise, and it's like it always looked. I mean, when it when it, when the performer came out, it was like that looked like the business, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I think um, I was kind of it was it was always it. Oh, was, oh, you, do you like Dominguez? I, I yeah, feel yeah, like, it's like well, they're both amazing. You yeah. know, I was like, and I, and I, I remember the shop. Uh, what opened my eyes to to it all was. Um, Again, talking about the early VCR, everybody's got a VCR, and, and I remember getting a copy of uh, VHS tape in the shop, and it was it was a copy of the uh, the the AFA King of the Skate Parks yeah. from Pipeline. Yeah. So that came in the shop, and I was like, oh, "Can I take this home?" <laughs> I was like, took it home that night, put it on. It was like, "Whoa, just unbelievable!" Yeah, you know, right, it was right, like, yeah. you know, it was like it was like Mecca, wasn't yeah. it? You know, it was BMX Mecca. Yeah. The sun shining there in this unreal Pipeline skate park. And then the riding's just something else because you're seeing it properly for yeah. the first time. That's not just pictures, you know. And they were airing higher than that one. Yeah, well, yeah, right? yeah. And, I mean, I didn't really have any concept of how deep that ball was or any how yeah. steep it was because, you know, without being seeing it, yeah, you, you, you don't. But it's just, it just it kind of like blows you away, doesn't it? And, um, and, I, and I think you just get, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I want, you know, the pictures, some of those photographs were like just so like amazing oh, because, yeah, yeah. you know, the way they were shot and then, you know, like the colours of the bikes, you know, when these were, when the bikes had like, everybody, pretty much everyone was like, using Skyways. Yeah. And then like, you know, white Skyways or white tyres. Yeah. Or like, something it. like that. That's like, <laughs> on a blue, blue on sky, a, on a, like, you know, bright concrete. Unreal. Yeah. You know, and yeah, it's like, yeah, I want that bike. So that was the, the, the Probably the main reason why I went towards the, the GD rather than the, the horror, you know, just was like that and the style and uh, did that. And I, and I remember that first year of um, riding again, I got a phone call one day and it was like, oh, um, we've got a, we've got a, got a call off this guy called Andy Preston and he's doing a show at the night up in uh, this town called, Ash this place called Ashington, which is like north of Newcastle, about 15, 20 miles north of Newcastle. Little tiny little town, you know, it's like a bizarre place to be doing a BMX show. And I was just sent a one night, it was midweek night, something like a Wednesday or Thursday night. And uh, you need somebody to do, do a demo with them. Are you up for it? And you get 50 quid or something like that. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was one of the first, like, like what felt like an established yeah. demo thing. That, that was again in '84. And it felt like, you know, I was like part of, like, I think Andy might have been riding for GT or the UK equivalent GT who I was di distributing that at the time okay so it was like supporting him it was like that and he was pretty cool with that and um was he cool at the time yeah yeah yeah, yeah, he yeah. Cool, yeah. yeah he's, a, he's a really nice guy Andy um 
And I, obviously, I, again, I was a little bit like, yeah, oh, just, he's on TV and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So that might have been before the first BMX beat. You know, okay, maybe, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to like put things in place. Yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, like and at the time there was there was this. So much happened in one year. Like, oh, it's just in eighty four. It's, it's just really like eighty four and eighty five. It's just yeah. like we must have travelled to so many places and been, you know, like you know, like met so many new people and you know, it was just an explosion. Like, yeah, yeah totally. it's, it's really difficult to like remember everything. Um, there was there was a <laughs> uh, there was a half pipe in Newcastle popped up that we found out about. There was a bunch of older guys who were at university and on one of the campuses just outside of the city, kind of like a few few miles. This, uh, this is like 12 miles from where I live, which like when you've got a BMX, it's like a mission. Yeah, right? it is a mission. Yeah. And, and the, the, the infrastructure of the, 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 the rail network, is it's nothing yeah. like London, you know. Yeah. It's like you can go to here to here, but yeah. you, can't, you can't get across there. It's like you've got to ride places if you want to get anywhere. So we found out about this half pipe anyway. And um, of course, we want, we had to go and ride it, and uh, we had to sneak in and ride it. So it was like on some college grounds in like a tennis court. Um, <clears throat> but the guys were all skaters, third skaters, you know, and they were like <laughs> BMX. <Yeah. guys. laughs> so it was a case of sneaking up there, watching watching them session, and then like letting them go off and sneaking on and having a bit of session. So you'd you'd spend like an hour and a half or whatever it took to ride there. You know, like on a mitt, like then sit around for a bit, or like go somewhere while they session, and they would leave. Then we'd go and ride it for maybe like be lucky to get an hour on it, if that. But that was kind of like the the kind of for me that was it. I was like, ah, half pipe, you know. Oh, like, you, you, you realize that, that early? I think, I think I very it. quickly learned, um, you know, that you needed to pump Man properly. Yeah. That was, I think, I think that had a lot to do with my style, you know. Okay, I was going to ask um, you about that later on. Because yeah. if if you were, if you were pancaking on a half pipe, you, you're not getting out yeah. the other side. So yeah. it was like, so it was that. That was the the kind of like thing that brought that style on, I think, and just always stuck Whoop. in terms of like nosing it in. Was those skaters? <clears throat> were they were they known skaters or? Um, none to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, the, the the tragedy with that one was that. Um, the ramp only lasted about a year or something because there was a there was a, one of those mega wind storms, you know, oh, okay. like, and it and it blew the thing over. And <laughs> what happened immediately after that was they they claimed that somebody's been here and ripped it all up and tried to make little jumps. It was probably that Dave Young guy. Oh really? Yeah. So I all of a sudden <laughs> got tarred with this brush that I, that I just so demolished the this ramp. Up, but you like riding. Like, yeah, that, that, I, that I ride like sort of 10, 12 miles to get to in the session. Uh, absolutely love doing it and uh, destroyed it. No, no. So that that was like a rumour that was there that went around for a bit. And that that ramp never, I don't think it ever got repaired or rebuilt. I don't know don't know why that was. I don't know what happened with that. So was, uh, and, that and that's where you learned how to look, basically. Like, yeah, if I, I, I think footage. that's where I first start getting that style of like coming oh. in and that was, but it was probably also because i was trying to mimic and copy what i saw on that that I king of the skate parks okay. you know when they're you know when they're erin and that pipeline ball they're, yeah, all, they're all coming in like you know i would say that well from <clears throat> I, I i only saw you ride probably from 87 on but like from that like if you look at them videos now of those old contests most people just and it's only natural they just want to do a trick and they just Huck into the air work, <laughs> and do the trick, like, and then just <clears throat> like, land in the middle of a ramp, really. But if you watch you, you're landing like how people land now, or have yeah, done for a, yeah. quite a while yeah. now, but like, you, you land <clears throat> right <clears throat> steep at the top. Yeah. Like. yeah. And I always wonder, like, how is this so much different to the rest of the guys who just, just like, just what I felt. You know, like, when you want to learn, when, you, when, when I was thinking, right, I want to learn to do that, I want to try to do that, but I want to do it. What I thought was doing it right. So you you got yeah. it off of that AFA tape. I think just just mimic and. But you almost it. took it to the next level of landing, really. Just, by the, just, by that just time. it always felt like it, unless you landed smooth, it was a shit air. Eh? Yeah. That's yeah. Just yeah, yeah. as crazy as it sounds. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it, it makes perfect sense. It was, and I just think it then became my style, like you know. It's like, that, so there's a few people sent us some pretty insane pictures. Um, 
Oh, well, yeah, since the internet became a thing, it was obviously in there. I've got a couple of pretty mental ones where, like, I'm literally, like, still pretty high. I obviously just, just, just got to that peak and then just, just coming in and it's like, oh, you know, they're all pretty sketchy, like, so, yeah. but it is what it is. I think the first person I remember really pointed out to us was Jerry. Oh, okay. I remember Jerry coming up as one national. He was like, oh, fuck, no, I love the style. Like, oh, really? like, yeah. I was like, so I was like, fuck, really terrible. Because at the time, I was like, recognising Jerry, Jerry's style and his yeah. writing. And I think he was kind of saying, like, he was trying, oh, trying to bone it in, like, yeah, he, trying to nose it in a bit, like, you know. Because like, oh, you know Jerry, at one back. point, was really rough. Right, right. Yeah, really rough. <laughs> right. That's what he was known for, like, oh. Off, yeah, know? I mean, it, well, it flipped. You know, I, I mean, not 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 the disrespect them I mean, in any way, but uh, I think I recall um, Jamie being like pretty pretty damn rough, like early okay. early early days, and that's certainly not to take yeah, anything yeah. away from yeah. Jamie, you know. But but I'm pretty sure I remember Jamie riding a white PK River, and he was one of those guys that would hook it at the ramp and like blast, you know, like pretty high, but sometimes land with the front wheel off the ramp <laughs> but you just get on with it and hack it at the other end you know what I mean it was, like, yeah. it was pretty mental like yeah but yeah was bizarre times yeah it's good man I, I like I like looking at them old vids and like dis dissecting like what people are doing everyone's got such a different approach to that yeah, you know, yeah. most people are just like just throwing, like, throwing an anvil up the ramp you know yeah. like yeah. I like that stuff as well. So, so, so sticking back to the G, GD thing, um, so yeah, it was like, I think after the first BMX beat, there was the the whole shot. Um, I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember if I'd... So I remember GD sending us a shirt up with factory on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, and? where's the rest? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think at the time I was like, fuck it, I'll, put, I'll wear it. And that, that might have been at the whole shot um, that I won. Um, so, but I'm thinking that's that's, that's 85. That's 85 yeah. by then. Uh, then uh, and but that, that the other big thing that happened for us that year was um, that that GT World Tour and Fiona, oh, yeah, yeah, Fiona and yeah. uh, Dave Breed. Yeah. Came to Newcastle and they came to the shop and they did like a, a sign in in the shop, so it was All like right. fucking great. And we, we did the, me and my pal did the uh, warm up show for them oh, in, cool. the, in the leisure center and then they did the world tour thing. So that was like a, another big thing, GE, you know, which felt cool. But um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I never rode for GE. I never even had any talks with, you know, like anybody that, re you know, it was like you didn't even UK know, yeah. distro, I didn't yeah. know who it was. And, um, as I say, the, that shirt appeared one day. I think that was shortly after the BMX beat and okay. something like that. Uh, yeah, the rest. Oh, wild. It's a weird, weird thing to do. So that 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 um, yeah, the second hole shot would have been that, that must have been eighty five. Then so I would have done the series and, and won it. So maybe he's done the second BMX beat by then. And yeah, yeah. Hole shot, yeah, because hole shot was always in December. <laughs> wasn't so it? that so maybe you know yeah, that yeah. picture that like, showed us before. Like, yeah, but that that, that was the session. Sure yeah, yeah. 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 So for some reason, I felt the blight. Why am I wearing an old GD gear? Yeah, <laughs> just thought it was cool. That's and cool. I probably just had the shop name on the back of the shirt. It was probably a little bit similar. To that. I think Peppy's deal initial deal with Amico, right for the, the bike shop he wrote for. With. It was because we always have like all the print on the back of the shirt. With, like, yeah. Whatever, like mine was like Kawasaki Newcastle. That was a, oh, that was okay. a shop. <laughs> it's like like anybody's really going to pay any attention. Well, to were me. you always thought that, like well, I did, but I was like, oh, I assumed that you was riding for GT yeah, just because no. of the, the overall look and the bike and everything. Yeah. I think it was just because you wanted the bike to look as cool yeah. as what you saw the pictures and yeah. you know, the the mags because they always looked like you know the the, the business like you know. Yeah. So did, did they change the quarter for the second BMXB or was it the same one? Uh, I'm pretty sure that now they changed it. It all looked pretty. Yeah, because it was outside same, as well, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty sure it wasn't the same ramp, but it was a, it was a wider one. It might have been one of the it might have been one of the early Vincent ramp ramps. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm not sure. So I think Paul would have been riding in. The I'd say. Yeah, on, yeah, on one of those early Vincents. You know, with the yeah yeah the, the awful, front, yeah. massive platform. <laughs> yeah. And the the bars as well were the same. They had, the, yeah, they was. They had a big. They had rock on. bars. Oh no, rock yeah, bars was after with a square feet, yeah, weren't they? Yeah. But they had the platform on, with oh, like points on or something. Yeah, lethal. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, 
just uh <clears throat> did you notice uh much of a divide between the north and south <clears throat> bmx i just think uh, yeah i mean the, the the big thing the obvious thing is just like the the difference in facilities initially um i think that was uh, it was way more evident with the freestyle scene as opposed to the racing because yeah. there was always a big strong racing cohort in the northeast um you know like said gary prosser uh, one of my best pals andy lincoln who's a good still a good pal now um he was a, he was a really good racer and there was there was always that like um national and regional circuit with the yeah. racing so that was always there and quite well established in the northeast um uh whereas freestyle was it was kind of it was really just us we were just starting that, oh, that, you that, was that the seeds, yeah, yeah. so to speak um and so that's what was different when we would come away to like any events and just people seemed to be a little bit further progressed yeah um and again the obvious thing is of course yeah the, the mags were based further south yeah um i think the original like freestyle bmx it wasn't south it was south north, it, yeah. was, it was like um morecambe morecambe so across northwest mm. um so yeah i think they were based there so that um, I think the only cover shot that I got in the magazine was like that was at Morecambe. We were was that on a Vincent. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah. It, yeah, I think I've got it. It was like a, I don't know, I don't even know if it was a national. It might have been a like a North Regional or something okay. like that. And me and Peppy were there doing shows. We didn't compete. All oh, right. Because there wasn't. Uh, I don't know, I wouldn't have been pro by then, maybe it's Marston and Pro, I don't know. So I think we were just doing a, a demo or something like that. But it was on the fucking seafront. Yeah. <laughs> it was like which on that particular day was pretty good because it's the clear blue sky, but it's yeah. that that cover shot's just not quite pipeline, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. So did you but, used to look at like the pictures of Rom and stuff and, oh, man, and just think like, there were skate parks everywhere down uh, here or what was it? What just, was that like? I, I remember the first time I saw Rom was um that I'm aware of was was in that early uh, action bike magazine. Um, Craig, is it? Craig, I mean, which stood out because oh, that, like, yeah. that was insane. Yeah, that was like, I think he's riding a ripper. Huh? Is he riding a bike? Was he, he on the horror? Horror, yeah, maybe. In that feature, he's on the horror. So, but yeah, I remember seeing that, um, and uh, so I was. I think I was conscious that was wrong. I knew that because you know. Yeah, but there was. The, uh, something else which go back further I always remember seeing this 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 feature in one of the earlier BMX magazines uh, the official BMX or whatever it was uh, and it was uh, it was Tim uh, Slides I think, was, I think so and he's yeah. like just fucking doing the big long hooking it out so yeah. like the parachute bones. yeah yeah, but yeah, yeah. like, but it was just nuts. Yeah, like, because it just looked way up. It looked there. like it was twelve foot out. Yeah, it looked yeah, immense, you know. And it yeah. was like for at the time, I was like, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. I want to do that. <laughs> Fuck the race. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, that that's what blew, blew me away. That type of stuff, and and then you would see pictures of Glenn at um, Gillingham. Gillingham. Yeah. Um, and then the, the pictures of of Neil and Craig started appearing at South Sea. Yeah. And it was like. <sighs> yeah, like, you, you've not even we've, got, the, we've got some cobbled banks. Not so, in the concrete skate park at all. Uh, the first, so the first time, um, so there was the Kellogg's, and then shortly after the Kellogg's was the feature in the action bike with Viola and Dominguez up at Livingston. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But we <clears throat> didn't, we didn't know where that was, and uh, obviously figured out. I think when the the first published that, did, they didn't. Did they say where it was, it was or they said it was a yeah, secret? Yeah, a some secret, like, yeah. some bollocks, yeah. like, you know, a little bit of uh, propaganda there, like, <laughs> Tim Lynn <Lake and> boys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, so, but we quickly figured out where it was, and uh, I think, you know, maybe really early 85, we, we did our first trip up to Livingston oh, you again. Went to Livingston, yeah. A bunch of kids in the back of a van. Oh, really? <laughs> Willie, Willie and Jill Smith. Fuck. 
drove us up there, you know, like about 120 miles it is, something like that. Just so Libby's like a little new town. It's very similar. Uh, I mentioned Washington earlier earlier on. So there's one of these little new towns that was built or developed around about the 60s, I think, thereabouts, and they're generally in between cities, you know, yeah. like so. So it sits between uh, Edinburgh and Glasgow, and um, so we. Pals in the van drives up there, you know, one stop on the way, like, scratch your legs back. <laughs> and we get there, and uh, I was like, oh, look at that. It's like, that's small, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it was yeah. like, this yeah, was the first, yeah. first, the first generation where there yeah. was just the bowl, and then there was the couch Half pipe, yeah. going down into the, uh, yeah, the, it, yeah. the drain bit, whatever. And uh, so I was like, oh, yes, totally blown away. And it was like a load of kids on bikes, and then there was some older dudes in the bowl. Like it was like fucking Davy Phillips and Stannis, oh, really? yeah. and they were like, "You're not fucking coming in here, fuck." <laughs> <laughs> we were like, that, "Fuck!" Oh. We were like fucking heads down, like going walking back. Oh, fucking a couple of the local guys um, who were riding the half pipe on BMX as well. Oh, just ignore them; they'll they'll be away in an hour or so. Don't worry, you'll be able to get to ride it. So um, yeah, so we ended up like hanging around the other bits. Didn't dare go near the bowl, like. And uh, those guys all cleared off after the session, and then we got to ride the bowl, you know. So. That's because you know, if you remember the article, they they're saying that's why they kept it secret because the skaters were gnarly and they didn't. Well, want it was, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it, and you know, um, I think so there's, I always that, there's always that kind of like uh, see what I image of like you know the the rough Scottish yeah, yeah, lot kind yeah, of, yeah, like. of course. But they, they were like you know they were the real deal hardcore yeah. vert skaters, which you know fair enough. Maybe young and, and, as well, and, so. and that park was only built, I think, around about eighty one, you know. After so well after uh, boom, wasn't it? Yeah, right. yeah. So um they were probably a little bit territorial and that's that's fair enough, you yeah. know. But what damage are you gonna do on eBay? Yeah, yeah, like, we did we didn't have like well, you did have pegs but you didn't grind on them there, like, you know. Probably probably time, didn't so. even have pegs at all. And that in that um that bowl didn't have coma on at that time. I oh, it's think, just, I, don't, I don't think so. Just edged, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you might. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. Didn't yeah. it? Because it got the pool coping on later on, didn't it? Oh uh, yeah, so. yeah. That's it. Yeah, I think it was just. <coughs> Aye. Sharp yeah. edge. So, so um, uh, the guy. So Dave Frame would have been one of the local guys then. Framey, um, Duncan Fraser is the name that rings yeah. and yeah. they were like riding that bowl, and they were like, whoa, they were pretty shit hot. But I was there on it. I was like, I'm pretty sure I was managing to get. Get the wall, like because oh, yeah. it was like the wall behind. Yeah, that's right. I'm pretty yeah. sure I was the first time riding. Oh wow, I'm that's good sure going. Yeah, yeah. Might have some, I might have some pics of that. Fuck, amazing. Yeah. So uh, that's that's pretty memorable. So like that was like oh, when, when we're going back to Livingston. When we go, it's like so we managed to do a few trips there, like but it was always weird because it was so different the riding back and forwards towards quarter pipes. Yeah. You know, and uh, what was always impressive was the locals because we, I think. Unless you 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 spent time around the skate park like as a younger kid and like it's a different style of riding, isn't it? It's yeah. like, you know, like doing the lines and all that. So watching kids do lines and stuff was like something totally new to us. Can you remember if you? Because that bowl like drops down, doesn't it? Yeah. Did you used to ride into the shallow end and then just yeah, pump that's what, the bottom? That's, that's what everybody used to do. Or did you just did you pedal on the? On the can you remember? Or did you just? <sighs> I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I wonder if like people. You didn't need the pedal really. You yeah, could, you could just you just come from the top, go in, then then in again, and you'd always have enough speed, you know. Yeah. Um, from what I recall, but everybody was like, we always used to think how steep it was, and like it's got loads of bird. It's only lovely. Yeah, lovely it just touches touch it. Yeah. So, but and the the, the thing what you realise with the concrete is that it's at least it's consistent. Yeah. Like when when you were riding wooden ramps, like no matter how well they're built, they'll flex or yeah. they'll move occasionally. Or you know, like there's always that time that you just miss. Whereas the concrete, you can just and I, and I think that's why some of those guys struggle at the nationals and that because like the the quarter pipes were always yeah. like so sh rickety and shaky and like it's not they were used to riding a conic like a solid concrete bow. Yeah, and it was like a little bit later on that frame you got like really shit hard. Yeah. And, but yeah, but the ramps had got a little bit better. By yeah, the true. Well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, so what, what was the ramp on the roof? Was that in Gateshead or was that? No, in that, that was in Carlisle. That okay, was, was Peppy's ramp. So, yeah. So when Peppy first had his had his own ramp off off 
of Bernie of of Vincent. He, he had Pepe, a, it's he had, a, he had it in his back garden, which was like, well, you know, he's, he lived in a in a terrace like house a, or something, like a, kind of a might have been an end terrace, but okay. like it was one of those little blocky council house type yeah. style properties that that so many of us <laughs> lived in, and he had like this like small back garden, but I think he just took the gate off, and he used to like just hack through through the little gap and yeah. up against the wall, like and. Road that so I think it was a little bit later on he got the opportunity to to use the top of this unused car park and so he put his ramps up there and stashed them there and it was oh so that was a car park yeah yeah it was just in the town like Carlisle is quite a small town you know yeah um, and uh, it's just like a disused car park and it was I think the 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 first one or two floors of the car park might have got got used occasionally but yeah. the top was like closed off. So it was like a private little setup. That was pretty cool, and um, <clears throat> that was that was. Uh, I remember going along. I mean, this this will be this will be going into eighty six, I think. Okay, so he had he had like a trip Cause that, ramp. Cause that, yeah, so he had he had like the curved Vincent trip ramp. Yeah, and the quarter pipe, and uh, I had I had I had rode the second BMX beat. I rode the whole shot. So you won that whole shot. Won the whole shot give yeah. us a quick, give us a quick uh, whole shot story. Um, <sighs> it just, who'd you come with? Probably the bus load or, or, or the, the van, like any the bus van, load again, like, van, yeah. you know, that, the t- typical the crew, kind of yeah. Like, yeah, crew, Local. like uh, the Laidlaw, the freestyle, free yeah, probably. So Laidlaw was was already one of your riding buddies. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, he was like one of the guys that would ride at the the club thing, and I knew, okay. knew him from that. Yeah, and, and like, where was he from? Just a few miles from me. Okay, like, so he's close. Gateshead, yeah. yeah, like similar. Um, and I mean, there was a there was a bunch of us, you know, like yeah. uh, oh, just thinking of a few names. <laughs> it's like Des Oaks is another guy um, who used to ride with us. Um, Joe Carney. Uh, like I said, Tony Hardy mentions um, Nev Potts. You might remember yeah, that yeah, name. Yeah, Nev Potts. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was always a Nevin character, Potts, yeah. a couple of years older than us, but he was like, you know, such a like one of those mental guys. Like I was just, he would just try and try and try and yeah. try and like do some pretty crazy stuff. But yeah, it was like so that that probably would have been us again, just a whole shot, just a van load, like drive down to Island and is it? Yeah, like it's around that. the corner. And um, again, just just. Such a long journey for the day, then get there, ride, then go home. Oh, you just did a day, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to afford to stay in and hotels, that was... you know, like all, all of that crew, you know, yeah. Um, and it's a bit of a responsibility if there was only two adults, like, yeah, uh, at the time. So, so yeah, was... um, <clears throat> I, think, and... I think what stood out was like. The whole shot was just almost mega because of the size of it yeah. and, and like the way it was like presented. It was like just the big event, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and I remember I was on, I was riding the GT, but I put spoke wheels on, and like instantly was getting higher and everything was better. <laughs> yes, and I think I got a pretty good picture in the mag, um, in then and and so I won won like the expert class for that, and. That was when, following that, Pepe asked us if, like Bernie had says, "Oh, Dave want to ride for us?" And he would go up the master class. You'll be pro. Yeah. And that was that. And so then, then very shortly, so that would have been just in the '86, and I was uh, Pepe was like, "Oh, TLB's coming up to do some shots on the on the roof of the uh, the garage. With it. Are you going to come across and ride?" And uh, I, I don't know if it was just Pepe asking us to come across or whether TLB said, "Oh." get David to come across and yeah and that was our first uh so it was TLB and Dave Curry oh really yeah 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 and uh <clears throat> so we did that we spent the day doing that and it was like again that was pretty cool meeting meeting them too like TLB and Dave Dick I think I maybe spoke to TLB at the whole shot and stuff like yeah. that just like you know just some little grommet asking yeah. us to get the dude from the magazine you know what I mean but um so meeting them like that and in, in, the, in those kind of circumstances was really new to me doing something like that, you know, and uh, um, that was a pretty good experience doing the whole thing with the the magazine and they were doing some shots of me and yeah, you was that uh, the, you had me and my bike from that day, was it? Probably, yeah. yeah. I think I Pepe think was doing that that like sort of um, Miami, Miami Hopper, Hopper, sort of gut leave thing. thing, whatever. Um, 
and Pepe was doing all his mental stuff. Like, and I, I, I think uh, the actual feet, the, the magazine feature that I put in, um, I took one of the photographs that, like, I think it was because they were doing a, doing a sequence of uh, a shot. So um, Tim was on a skateboard and Dave was pushing him along. As Pepe was doing some like flatland thing yeah. and they, they ran like a sequence of photos and they were oh Dave take a photograph of us doing this and, and that was in the magazine oh like, cool oh, pretty cool I took oh, that picture oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. so and I think that might have been the, the magazine that had the, me and my bike in yeah so, I think yeah. it is yeah Peppy's on the front well that was like that was like embarrassing as they used this old picture of us and I was like fucking hell like this and, and uh, the the guy that did the uh, little the little write up was um I don't know if you remember a, a downhill mountain biker called Jason McCroy. I know the name, yeah. Yeah, he was a shot, like a shit hot downhill mountain biker who went, you know, I think he won the World Cup things and all that in the uh, in the late eighties, early nineties. And uh, well, uh, he was he used to be a BMX racer originally, okay. and, and it was Jason's father that did that little interview. He's not the guy that had the accident, is he? Jason yeah. passed away. Oh, yeah, 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 he had yeah, yeah. a crash on his Harley, yeah. I think. So yeah, it's pretty tragic, sad. But yeah, so it, it, they, they, they did that feature, and I was like, and I just when I read it, I was like, oh God, sounds so cheesy, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what? It's, if you can't laugh at yourself, yeah, you thought out of time, yeah. Like, oh man, I was embarrassed by it so much. I do right. Can you remember don't know why, just, who you beat at, at the whole shot? Who was in your group? <sighs> Not really. Can't uh, remember. Just like the blur. It just. It just. It almost just seemed like one of the nationals, but with a big crowd. Yeah, okay. Because it, it, cause we'd done like the full series and that. Yeah, right. Probably would have done like maybe five rounds, you know? Yeah. And it just seemed like it was bolted on the end of that, and it probably would have, would have been all the same guys. Okay. There was a guy, there was a guy that used to always be um, really competitive against us, uh, and he was from not Nottingham. Um, uh, Nick Martin. Nick, yeah, Nick, Nick, yeah, yeah. He used, remember, he used to ride a GT as well. Yeah, he was one of the yeah, Nottingham guys, yeah. yeah. And uh, he, was a, he was a nice guy. And uh, yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, I think, uh, I can't, you know, I think we might maybe drew first place. Oh, also. really? Yeah. Maybe, but I took the trophy. <laughs> 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 I'm kind of further than you, mate. <laughs> I'm having a. <laughs> I think Pepe won that year, right? Well, I think 85 like the, the might master been. class pro class or whatever it was uh, possibly yeah, yeah I think so yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah that was so then that was that was on, Vin, on Vincent then so yeah and what, what was the first Vincent from, was that uh, just the first one zone? I got was on air zone <laughs> how many of them did you get through <sighs> a few yeah I'd imagine <laughs> yeah I mean it was a good bike but I mean, what were they thinking with that down tube you know um, I remember the first one I snapped, I was actually, so I was still working in the bike shop and uh gets like pretty much like two thirds of the way home and I just like this unusual creaking noise from the bottom, I was like what the fuck, I looks down and the down tube was just snapping half, oh, wow. Bernie, <laughs> frame, <coughs> frame snapping half and it was like, it took about, uh, sent us a one up, it took a few days like, and it's another one, it's another one, and then um, I think you know, I was eighty six, um, and we did. We ended up doing a tour. We went and did a tour in a, in Norway for a couple of months uh, in the summer. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> so that was uh, that was that was. I mean that, yeah, that was like mega experience, you know. Yeah. Um, and it was like a full on. Um, we were promoting this uh, Norwegian caravan company. Okay. Who obviously uh, touring and caravaning is a big thing in the summer, you know, like yeah. the Scandinavians, which, yeah, an unreal country, you know. So we had like, we had the we had the van, which um, Bernie had towed the ramps <laughs> up. Uh, they came up to Newcastle, actually, <laughs> because the, the ferry across the to Sweden went from North Shields, which out at the time. So we went across, it was like uh, 20 odd hours to Sweden, and uh, uh, drive up from Sweden up to yeah. Oslo. Gets to Oslo, checks us onto the, into this uh, mega hotel, 
Um, and then we'll meet all the guys from this company and they bring like top of the range, like tour of caravan things. And uh, we spend like a week sort of just prepping the show, like just what we we're going to do and all that. Did a couple of shows in the car park. Um, just like practicing and stuff, and then we went on tour for like some like six weeks, I think. Oh wow! Well, um, well, we had like we had the van with the ramps and like a, a like a big car with a huge caravan. To... You towed the quarter parts from the UK to yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And then uh, so we did that over the summer. Went pretty much every corner of Norway. Went pretty far up north. Spent a few days in the parts where like it was sort of July time, and uh, I. Had my 18th birthday as well while I was oh, okay. there. I remember that. Um, went up up north uh, as far as a place called Trondheim, and it was like daylight, 24 hours. Oh, right. <laughs> it was like pretty bizarre, you know. So that was an experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd, so that was at the point like I'd, I'd, I was still working a bike shop, and like I got the got the yeah, I was going to do this tour, and you get the time off, and then I was like, so that's the guy. Oh, I've got this chance to do this tour. I'm going to get paid and it's like, uh, you know, I was like, well, I'll ask the, uh, the owner and I'll come back and he came back uh, 20 minutes later and he's like, oh, I can't give you the time off, Dave. And I was like, oh, well, I'll finish working uh, on Friday and I'll not be back. <laughs> so I just quit the job. But it was like, you know. Yeah, yeah. For, you're, you're not, yeah, not, yeah. Not, yeah. So that was that. <laughs> yeah, it was like an off, off tour and doing shows. Cool, and, uh, yeah, it was like cracking experience, obviously spending time on the road with like your pals and did you take spare yeah. frames? What, what, what? We we all had new bikes, okay. um, and uh, oh, that that was the odd thing as well because they they wanted us all to look. <laughs> but obviously, we're promoting that co caravan company, and so they wanted it to look like a total professional outfit, you know. So it was like, so we had to have like particular uniforms, okay. which were like really cheesy. Um, but they wanted all the bikes to look the same, so we're back on Skyways as well. Oh, right. So that was a bit of a difficult one, but got on with it, you know. Yeah. So, what was the uniform? Was it not the Vincent uniform that, that people were wearing over here? But no, no, there? no, it was like it was, it was something totally different. And I oh, remember okay. the first time putting it on, I was like, Are you kidding us? <laughs> you know, I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, What was it? Just weird the colours and stuff? Yeah, yellow and white, and it had like padded shoulders. And, oh, okay. I was just like, Are you kidding? It was like, a, you know, like you imagine like some, you know, let's dress your kitty up as a BMX. Yeah. Or, or you know, fancy like, dress so, BMX. Yeah, it was like that. Yeah. And I remember, uh, <laughs> I remember the the first the first time we did a show in the car park, just like practicing, and they wanted all the gear on, and it was for like the bosses of the the, the company and stuff. And uh, these fucking trousers that they made, they obviously made them with a dodgy size leg or whatever, so it was like hanging down. And I, was, <laughs> and I remember doing something, going into doing like a. Uh, some flatland trick and the seat just rived the fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just remember like spitting me dummy I was like really like embarrassed and I was like I'm, fuck I'm, this I'm pissed off with the yeah. stupid outfit I was like so Ber I remember Bernie had to sit sit in the hotel all night and fucking stitch these pants up so they fit properly you know <laughs> bless him you know what was he like Bernie nice bloke yeah, yeah. yeah lovely guy um so I was kind of like it's a bit of a geezer, you know. But oh, yeah. It's like um, just kind of first time I met him. Obviously, like started riding for them. Me and Pepe went down to Brighton. That's uh, how he was from Brighton. I think I think he's kind of like from there. He lived just along, you know, not not in the middle of Brighton, just along the coast a bit. Uh, but his family all lived there, and I remember staying with his family in the house, meeting his daughter, um, Katie Vincent. Uh, you know, his wife was lovely. Um, I don't know if I don't know if he had, had another kid or not. But it was just a one. I can't do, remember. Do you know how he ended up involved with BMX? I've got. Was he no, Paul Hudson? Yeah, Paul. Was, but Paul worked for him. Okay. Um, Paul was Eastbourne. All right. Um, you know, Paul obviously used to ride for the Skyway a lot. Yeah. And then just somehow got wrapped into that. So I don't know if Bernie initially started making like because um, he. He did race bikes as well, so okay. I, don't, I don't know if there was a link remember. there or something. But but he was like an engineer guy, you know. He, so he, he, was had, a, he, had, a, he had a workshop. Oh, he's building other stuff. So yeah. his workshop was on. He, his wife had a hairdresser or something like okay. that. And on the back of the hairdressers was a big workshop, <laughs> and, um, <coughs> and, that, and that's pretty much what his setup was. And, and then in terms of 
going on to do the ramps and stuff. I don't know, like this, just one of them. And I, you know, like some of the ramps were really like amazing. And then some of them were a little bit iffy. Yeah. You know? But I mean, that's something that could have really been honed in on and sorted out if he if he kept on doing it. You know, uh, I saw I saw Katie a few times um, in recent years because she kind of like I think she she kind of started collecting the old bikes again and stuff like that or she had I don't know if the workshop still belonged to them and whatever you know and she turned up at a few of the old school like oh, okay. the, the events um, the Milton Keynes events so it was quite nice catching up oh and actually actually um, it might have been about five or six years ago Bernie came to one of those oh really so yeah it was nice you know so I think I think he lives over in either Spain or France now oh all right possibly is, is she she might start a Facebook page, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Well, yeah. you, you she she, she kind of was there and then popped off. No, she did. She did have a page. Like, okay, I remember seeing but, something. Um, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen anything for a while, like, but yeah. But I, I always like see pictures of her and her mates, or just dot, dot them around like, um, like Brighton, like yeah. on bikes, like meeting up with a few of them and just scooting around. I don't know, but maybe Paul was out a couple of times. I remember seeing Paul a few years ago as well. Oh, all right. Yeah, he's he's like into mountain bikes and stuff like oh, that. Oh, cool. Or cyclocross, maybe something like oh, that. Yeah. So I always quite like him when people are still into bikes of any kind. The really, rock. Right? Yeah. Paul was like yeah, the sensible it. one about when we would when we did this this the sky uh, the the uh, Scandinavian tour thing. That he was like the little bit older, more sensible one. Me and Peppy were the dicks. You know, so, just so like so carrying on. Just the three of you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Bernie came back uh, to the UK. <clears throat> um, and it was like the the Norwegian guys that drove us around and announced the shows and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. And um, we ended up, we we went back to Norway to um, I think it was in the October to do this big exhibition um, centre show. It was like a you know like a trade show for caravans. Yeah. So they had this massive stand and they, they took more ramps up. So we had like uh, we had like a double setup. We had four quarter pipes out there. It was a four quarter, or maybe it's had two quarter pipes and two trick ramps, something like that. But we had like a huge, and they had all of the top brands on. We were doing shows like for a week in this big exhibition center. So that was that was a, and I, you know, again being being in Norway in October is a lot different to July. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like pretty cool. Was it snowy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was it? Yeah, uh, uh, just starting, <clears throat> but it was like noticeably cold that night. Yeah. So, Pretty cool, uh, good, good times. Good. Mm. <clears throat> and then, like, so then you had like the later sort of BFA days, which would have been like what, 86, 87. Yeah, yeah. Well, I noticed that you was doing five forties. Well, quite early <laughs> on. So, so um, I, I'm thinking like maybe eighty six when I like early eighty six when I learned them, like when I just got on Vincent. Because I remember seeing Craig and Neil trying them, um, and I'm gonna put one out here, like, but uh, probably um, Russell a few fellas, like, but I reckon I, I reckon I landed the first five forty in a in a national, that was a like a proper five forty, oh, yeah. like to, at the top, because because I remember the first national of eighty six. It was either the first or the second, Craig. When I did as well, I mean, they, they were like the, the master class of the pros. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, can't remember which groups were, but they they were in the prior. Yeah, of... Craig uh, tried one and, and slammed it. That was his run over, like you know, at the end of his run. And then Neil did the same slam, and didn't didn't pull it. So I thought I'm gonna fucking learn that and I'm gonna pull it. And then we went to low stuffed, which is right down on the like yeah. Norwich, is it? I remember going to that, and I remember pulling it first, first one in, in me run, like, and uh, and I, I was like, I was like silently thought that was like the first one because I was, I was in the group before. So, but Lo what year was it? Eighty six. Eighty six. I'm pretty well, sure. Lowest stuff, I think, was the one that Eric had that sequence of. Put possibly that might have been later though. I could be wrong. It might not have been lowest stuff that one, but that's what I assumed. But. But, but, you know, I, yeah. I just had it in my mind that I might have, but, you know. How but, did you learn? Like, <clears throat> just, just. It's uh, quite a scary, scary thing to learn, isn't it? Especially back then. I, I think, now, I think I always did like, um, I always did like 360s. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Then, like, yeah. but about three quarters of the way up the ramp. Yeah, and just fake me back in. So I could do them pretty early on. All right. But it wasn't it wasn't the type of thing that I would do in a comp. Yeah. Don't know why. I just never. Don't think I ever did. And then when the uh, like it was the case of doing because I hadn't really even seen people do five forties. Yeah. Uh, because in that early pipeline um, video that I had, I don't. I don't think anybody's doing 540s no, yet. I think it's the yeah. year after. So yeah. year after. Um, but I never saw any of that footage. The 85 one. <clears throat> um, not then anyway, you know, but... So, uh, so yeah, I just it was just a case of, like, we had, like, we had, like an indoor... By then, we we had, like, the, the second indoor place that we started building quarter pipes in. And this was a place called the Oval. It was, like, a community centre which had a sports hall. And this was in Washington as well. Oh, okay, so this, uh, this you, is the place with the skylights. So the oval was where Laidlaw used yeah. to ride with two, yeah, yeah, two yeah, quarter yeah, pipes. Yeah, this footage so we, that we, had, we had like we had. So initially, the first <laughs> built the first quarter pipe they built was about a six and a half foot thing. It was about seven foot wide, tight whippy thing. But it was an indoor ramp that we could go and ride. So we would go and use that one, and that that became the regular place, um, and then. Um, the the guy who used to manage the uh, centre recognised that there was a lot more kids wanted to ride BMX bikes than wanted to come in and be in the youth club oh, and yeah, yeah, okay. play football and stuff. So he, he slowly started letting us build more, so build a trick round, build a couple of other things, and then build a second quarter pipe. Um, and then one of the Vincent quarter pipes came to stay there because we had a we had like one of the early nationals up in Washington okay. in a sports hall somewhere like just down the road. So the the ramp stayed. So we had like a setup where we had like um three quarter pipes and trick ramps and other little fly off things and whatever. So that was like that was probably the back end of eighty five and um, going into eighty six and then so I had a lot more so you had to, access yeah. I could ride like more than once a week on quarter pipes, you know what I mean? And that that thing started off like two, three, four nights a week, just gradually building up and within a year it was like we could ride there nearly every day yeah, you know, you if, see, if yeah. we wanted. So yeah, it was pretty cool. And then the, so the five forty you learned there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, like and you know, took a took a fair few slams. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Um, all the quarter yeah. pipes eight feet wide at best probably um maybe seven six six seven oh, yeah tight yeah um but uh, you, you know the way you learned them like you, you didn't carve them we, yeah yeah no, that's it, we didn't yeah. carve like as then you know no, I was like, telling, was people like, asking me if someone was asking me yesterday is that like why why were the quarter pipes so thin and i was like well because the air was this it was like, you, had too, you had too much water pipe but, already. But I think it was about moving them around. You, you, yeah, yeah. So whenever, that's the other thing I said, we, yeah. like, you know, we, Space. We, we built a quarter pipe at one of my pal's houses once, uh, which which was a little bit like the first one we, we got to use in the the the, um, the the little village hall thing. And um, we'd have to tip it up and stick it behind the bins in his little backyard yeah. which was tiny you yeah. know what I mean because yeah. you couldn't leave it anywhere because if, if somebody saw it they'd just burn it down yeah, burn and trash it, it. Smash it yeah. um, and that, that I think it was the case that, in that first that 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 GT World Tour in 85 when Fiola and Dominguez came uh, Fiola and Breed came to do the show and we supported that it was in a leisure centre right in the centre of Newcastle City Centre but the service lift into the building was so small you couldn't get a decent sized quarter pipe into that so they ended up with a shitty five foot wide quarter oh, pipe really? and uh, you know they did another show the next night down in a red car on a, like next to the race course which was out, outdoors but they had even worse there like they, they didn't have any ramps there they had like a bit of a uh, bit of um eight by four up against the bench like a flat track so they didn't even and that was it they couldn't even do any airs on that show no, no, there wasn't even a quarter pipe there. You'd be disappointed like if you was a kid, wouldn't you? Well, like, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, see some you know, airs, basically. So it was, they were like, that's how sparse it was. You yeah, know, there was nothing. There was, there was a bunch of guys that we knew. Uh, There's a little town um, south of Newcastle called Darlington. Um, it's like half an hour on the train, and there's a bunch of guys I know had a ramp. That they had a quarter pipe there, so I'd, I'd go down and ride that occasionally. But that was before the indoor ones that we got. You know, like. So it was like it was always a mission to get yeah. to, you know. 
Yeah, you have to so, seek it. Mate, mate, you have to basically put a lot of effort into what you're doing. Yeah, you? and, and then, then like if you're doing like when when it got to the point of learning stuff like fives and stuff like that, it's like it's always a risk you're going to injure yourself. How are you going to get home? Yeah. So it was like, um, I think, uh, was, yeah, just, just and then, and then five. It. Like when you do you remember doing the first one out the top, the five forty? I, I, I think when I learned them, I was always like. You just fell around the, around the top of oh, the ramp okay. anyway because it just felt to do them any other way wasn't a, it was a different trick yeah you know, it was like you, anybody can do a five forty kick turn yeah I saw a with thing a little, you, with a little hop in it where you was a bit mad about people <laughs> yeah. doing low five forties but so like I, I think it was no the, the trouble was it was like you go to a contest and like somebody do one and they just get on oh, did a five forty yeah. yeah but it was like a kick turn with a hop in it yeah like shouldn't be judged but. Again, it's just like how stuff evolves, and yeah. who, who was judging the contest, and it's like, it doesn't really matter. But I did notice that, like, I've, I mean, obviously Eric, oh, yeah, Eric, was on, them, like, like, Eric was on the next yeah, level, yeah, totally. And I, you know, like, um, <laughs> I, I never realised Eric was a scaler. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, you know, um, and, and it was interesting to, to to hear him talk about that. You know, that was like, yeah. It was, it was so, cool. so of course, he's in, he's influenced. His style was influenced yeah. by his. his you know that, that. But but if I watch I watch some of the um because we had the Tires of Worlds um, footage <coughs> that Mike oh, gave us oh. and I think it was on there and I was like oh, you'd like your five forty like this high yeah and most hard well, the, 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 the footage that you've probably seen of that's like because uh, that there's a story behind that one as well oh is there yeah? oh well the the whole because the, the, they they just dumped the BMX beat thing in the end like. Um, we we spent a full week doing that tour, tour, and nobody knew. Well, none of the riders knew that it was going to be BMX beat on the final day. All right. So it was like we all turned up in Carlisle, and we goes into like this sports hall, which was like a studio because they painted it all out and whitewashed, like grayed it all out for the TV, which was like what the hell, you know? And it was like BMX beat everywhere, and I was like, what? What's this about, you know? And it was like. Oh yeah, yeah. You're gonna do like two runs. You do your world's run, and then you do the BMX beat run. And I was like, oh, what? Just spent a week, right? And I was like, and kind of like there was a bit of a thing about it because it had been kept pretty yeah, low key. Sprung it on you. But I think the truth, the, the part, partially, I think it was probably the, off the back of the TV sponsorship um, that they managed to finance the the, the whole week's tour oh, okay, anyway. Yeah, you know. Um, but that was it was oh, it was a little bit naughty and if I re, like I, I never really remember anybody talking about it or no that's the first time I've heard of it uh, yeah. but that's a fact because I remember yeah. like the night before like well there was like a riders meeting because everybody was a little bit miffed by it, oh, you know okay. um, a little bit like taken aback and I was like oh hang on a minute you know that's what's we've been doing this all week and then you have just so, but everybody got on with it. Yeah. Um, but what happened was we, we ran the actual contest, so like the worlds. So the the, the worlds com competition run was different to the one that was televised. So you did four. You had to do four runs that day. Yeah, if I did flat, I, I can't remember if I did flatland or not. Like, but, uh, but I, I you, can't you remember. Did... But I, I do remember doing. I've I've got the run that I won the worlds like that year of that. Oh, you won that year. Yeah, pro. Yeah, that was pro yeah, that year, wasn't it? Yeah, and then there was there's also a one which was the BMX beat one uh, that they, that they televised, which was different because that was like it had flat. It like they wanted you to do a freestyle run, not just so, a ramp run. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So did so that was that was. I mean, it, you know, ask, this, ask some of the writers that making, were in it, and they, they might remember. But. It's making sense because I, I watched some of it semi recent, and I, I remember <laughs> some people are doing. Like you say, so the one, the one that was televised, like, yeah, yeah. I come on, I think I do like a Top Gun, um, which was one of those like yeah. handstand bar press type things, and then I do something else, and then I, I just remember just going, I, fuck it, you know, I'm just yeah, just hitting the ramps, and uh, yeah, that was um, yeah, no, I, I watched it, and I remember thinking, oh, what's this? Because they're doing like both I mean, things. I, 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 I did that run. I just didn't care what was happening because I'd already done yeah, the I, best, I yeah. the best run I could have done. Like in the actual contest, yeah. you know, it's like uh, by the time we did that, I was like, it's pretty tiring as well. Yeah, because it's not, it's not just the fact. I mean, we, they were like long runs as well, weren't they? Like, yeah, it was like two minutes or something like that, and it's a long back and forward. Yeah. So you, 
you, you, you're pretty worn out with that, but you, you're also overwhelmed by the whole experience of the TV involvement and all that. So psychologically as well, if you've done one run that you've put everything that you've could well, it's just spent a week just focusing on wanting to win that. And then, and, you yeah. know, um, and then they spring that on you. Oh, yeah. And you've got to go again. Yeah, you get on with it. I mean, I, there was a lot of stuff that I think a lot of people learned from that that particular period of time that yeah. summer. And a lot of things changed after that. I'll tell you what I noticed from that, um, that Ties of Worlds as well. Peppy was riding. He rode with Skyway at this point. Yeah. And um, <coughs> there was a half bar spin out. Yeah, yeah. I was, never, was, I, was never, I never, I never knew that. And I was like, "What the fuck?" I was like, "What?" He just did a heart like it was, must be the yeah, first he, one. But he, he was doing them. I reckon he was probably doing them when, when he was on Vincent. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, pretty, like, really, you know, he was like, he was, there was stuff that he thought of and did that was like kind of like pretty, pretty groundbreaking. It was like candy bar. He, he pretty much invented the candy yeah, bar as well, didn't he? As, as, <laughs> Like a handful of things, but that he would always he was that was one thing. He was a progression, you know. It was like and he, every time I met him, every time I see him, he had something else, you know. Whether it was something like ramp wise, or whether whether it was like flatland. I mean, it was like some of the stuff that he was doing was like just totally different. To everybody, what anybody else was doing, yeah. Which uh, was you know, it was always like that was like good for us because it's like every time you meet, you yeah. know, you. You'd be like, wow, what are you doing now? What? So it would give you like a little bit of a push, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So. But he, he was kind of like, um, you know, he always he, he always recognised that it seemed like, you know, like the whole the 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 image of the Skyway team and like they always seem to have so much more care to and you know yeah. like that and he he kind of I think he always like wanted that you know he always oh, I felt like, but I think. Then when he eventually started riding for them, he was never going to be the number one boy, you know, because I don't think, he, you know, he wouldn't have fitted in for Pete, I don't think, yeah, you know, it, really. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, I, I think he, he suffered, he's riding so far, you know. He's, he's, I, he's in in that video, he doesn't look like didn't, himself. Didn't right now, because he wasn't, yeah. I, I just think he, I think he would have been held back by the whole, and like you know, when sometimes you want something, then when you get it, it's not quite what you want. Yeah, that's that's what I felt. That's what I saw with it anyway. That, he, that I think just, he's only on he's only on that once. He, he didn't ride well at all at the yeah. at the, at the, at the Tires of Worlds. He, he didn't. He, he really suffered all week, um, which you know I don't know. It was, it was a little bit. It was, I don't know if I noticed it as much right at the time, but I think well, what I did recognise it was like. He wasn't such a threat. <laughs> oh, okay. Like com that was the big thing because because out of who he was, was riding, group, it was yeah. like yeah, 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 yeah. It was like because he would have been like one of the ones the that would push. Yeah, 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 too right. But it just as a, as the week started, it was like well, hang on a minute, you know. And like my riding had changed quite a bit. Yeah. You know, then um, I was doing like a lot of stuff that other people weren't doing. Um, you know, uh, it's like. The, Fakies across the channel. Yeah. Um, no handed fakies. Yeah. No fronted yeah. fakies. Um, <clears throat> the fives. Peppy was the Peppy was the like halfway up the ramp. Five. Yeah. yeah Kicked in five forty, yeah. dude. You know. I think he crashes one. Well, Terry it? Terry's fives were the same. Yeah. Like you know, not that not to give you any shit, Terry, but hey, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> kick turn with a hopping up, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you, you know, you fought if you, if you slam one of them, you're gonna what are you gonna do? Yeah. But, so it's a different trick, but. Aye. But yeah, it's just, uh, he just yeah he, he didn't seem to get on well with the uh, the whole Skyway thing. Didn't seem to anyway. No, yeah, that's yeah, so, like, so that was, that's uh, what it looked like in that video. Yeah, and and it was a funny yeah it was a funny week because obviously we used to be pretty well we we were still good pals and like but that that week he was just a little bit distant yeah. yeah which was odd. It's quite unfortunate because then because he could have capitalised on the whole thing because it because it ended up. Being his show, like being yeah. big was his. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Carlisle. Yeah, like everybody there would have been like the majority of the that 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 sort of centre would have been people from Carlisle. You know, it was always. Did, a did he even thing. ride in that final? I'm not sure. I can't I don't remember. Know if he even did. Yeah. Can't remember. Honestly, can't remember. He might not have got through. Yeah. Might not have qualified. Maybe. I'm not too sure. Yeah. 
because it was a case of qualifying through the week. Okay, so maybe you didn't because yeah, <coughs> yeah, we rode like we went Saturday to Saturday one week to Sunday the following week. It was like eight days. And that was that days. was the tour, wasn't it? Because right. I, I went started in like Woken. Uh, Woken. That's where I went. Yeah. Well, we started in Woken, but I think we we we'd even just been to a national in Woken a couple of weeks before. Yeah, sounds familiar. So yeah. I think there's some footage somewhere. There's, there's that, that's, that's somebody, yeah. somebody showed us some footage recently of, of my run at Woken, and I, it wasn't the ties, I don't think. Yeah, it's happened because I went to two that year in Woken. Yeah. I remember when the right. ties thing came up, I was like, oh, that's Woken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'd already been. And that, you was riding for, Vin, you stopped riding for Vincent for that. You was riding for was, TNC. I, yeah, so oh, it's, it's like some guys, local local bike shop, like smaller local bike shop the guy started because uh, everybody you know remember when everybody started wearing like I think we were just copying the skate and surf gear like, so it was like Quicksilver mm. OP um, GNS stuff like that mm. and like this guy started uh, distributing town and country gear into the UK and into Europe and uh, <clears throat> he was he was pushing that pretty big and um he he kind of like says, Oh, do you wanna do you wanna ride for for this? I'll I'll give you whatever bike you wanna ride and I'll cover you the same as what Vincent would cover you, you know, which was like expenses to all which comps and all of that type of stuff. And and I think at the time it was like, Oh yeah, and was like, you know, it's going me on direction, doing yeah. my own thing. It seemed like the right idea, but it kinda of went a little bit sour, you know. They weren't you know, the the offer wasn't as genuine. As, okay. as it as it might have been, and it was a little bit, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a wasn't it wasn't the best experience. Did, I, I, didn't turn out great, you know. I didn't work. <clears throat> How long did that last? A year or something? Uh, probably maybe it's a year, yeah. close to that. That's like the following year. Like was we me and Terry went uh, we went and did shows in Saudi. That's what, okay. So like things changed again by then. Yeah. So. Um, it had quite a cool image that I thought at the time. TNC. It, it, yeah, I mean, I, I think for me, I think the, the I think I was associated Andy Shahara with it. Yeah, he was like, yeah, pretty cool guy. And, like, and it was like, and it, because it th it was when we were going from the uniform days to yeah, the it, yeah. transition across, so it was like an opportunity. Oh, it's going to give us all all the gear because everybody was wearing it. You know? Yeah, it was like, so it was like, yeah, it seemed the cool. stickers we'll do that. Well, oh ah, yeah, so. Um, so I, I think I rode a. I think the first bike I had from them was like a. I sort of like a street beat, you know. And got that just painted a different color and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it, was, it, it lasted, lasted a little bit less than a year, I think. But yeah, and it, and it was like, yeah, it wasn't wasn't what it was made out to be. How come you rode the TA? Have you had one before? I don't know. I'd, I'd always like had spells. I'd I'd. Um, I think before I'd got my own performer, I think one of one of my friends had a TA. Like you know, again going back like really early days, and and I I, I seem to recall having like the use of somebody's bike for a a month or so, and oh, I was okay. a TA. Kind of liked it, and then um, I think it was just the association with the uh, the TAs. Uh, Hoffman was riding a TA when he was oh, over, yeah, yeah. and it just. It, I don't know, it felt all right, you, you know, got on with it all right, even though when I look at the setup, when I look at how it was set up, uh, you know, like that 87 Pure, it's like, Christ, how did you ride it? And uh, it was like, I mean, it, it was a really short bike as well, it's like um, something like an 18 and a half inch top yeah. one. and they did, they did a TXL, but I, I never got one of those. I think if you looked at other <clears> people's <throat> bikes from that, that it wasn't, time. you know, riding wise, it wasn't too dissimilar to yeah. the street beat. And I think when I broke the street beat the first time, um, uh, I maybe just went on to a TA, TA, and then I got another street beat, um, and, and kind of went back and forwards a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, I broke a, I had a, t a street beat when I went to Saudi, and I broke that in Saudi. So um, the only thing lying around that I could use then was a, um, a sport. All oh, right. It was like an '86 sport, I think it was. Um, so it was like a bit longer, um, and I asked, uh, got in touch with Shiners, and asked them to send us a street beat. 
um, and I wanted that new one, you know, the one, the, the chrome, the yeah, two tone yeah. one. It's like, in the center is the old one, and I was, I was a bit pissed off, so I sent it, sent it back. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than just, you know, again, just yeah. stupid decisions, yeah. you know, was, like, just stuck with the sport for a bit, but I couldn't get on with it at the time. Just wasn't my, just didn't do it for me, yeah. the sport. Yeah, sometimes don't. <clears throat> that was, I think it's the only time I ever really rode a horror, you know? Um, and uh, anyway, I brought that, that bike came home, and about three or four of my mates owned that at some point. <laughs> when it did the rounds, you know. And so, the, at the um, the tyres of the world, that was the first time Hoffman came to the yeah, UK, I mean, right? Yeah, and, and and you know, I was I was laugh I was I was I was shouting at the the uh, laptop last week at, at Mike because you were talking about the drop drop crank thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I believe it was a little bit different in that Hoffman was the guy that was dropping the cranks all the time. That's a style he rode. But, and Hoffman's influence. But we, what we realised yeah. after we put that out was Josh White had the first right. features of the drop right, crank. Right, right, aye. There you go. But, start start yeah. corrected again. It's because I was shit with Grisette. Yeah, right? yeah. He, he was dropping the well, cranks. Well, he was doing everything. But, yeah, I remember. Because like, it was that issue of freestyling. That's it, yeah. That just, it was like the Josh White issue. Yeah, went it went to the next point, like, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Aye. So yeah. there you go. But I think seeing somebody riding, mm. again, you're seeing it or seeing mm. pictures of it, it's different. So I think uh, that watching Matt ride, it, t it, it changed my attitude um, and a lot of people I think it changed a lot of people's attitudes um, I st I certainly st I stopped I stopped holding the brake so I just started like yeah, right like, cool. just yeah and so because it's up doing that you, your style changed because you were dropping yeah. the crank and yeah. doing stuff and like uh, and Laidlaw was the same pretty sure um, and then mine and Laidlaw's riding just went boom <laughs> Straight after that, because we were pushing each other, yeah. and we got to that whole shot that year, and like fucking snapped me wrist, didn't I? <laughs> so Did that's you? why I didn't compete in that because I couldn't couldn't even I couldn't even hold the uh, handlebar. So I did a uh, can can look back in in practice. In practice, okay. And uh, foot dropped off the pedal, straight to flat bottom. Oh shit! So uh, and there was a, there was a picture of that. Um, Windy had a website a good few years ago, like earlier Facebook days, and, and there was a picture of the Can Can Look Back oh, wow. on that. And you can <laughs> there's like, there's about it, my foot on the pedal it's by about a half an inch, and yeah. I'm thinking that's fucking that's just one. before. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, just uh, so I couldn't, I was like absolutely gutted because you know, it was like, you know, won the world, yeah, getting yeah. a big event, <laughs> final year, end of the year. And I uh, couldn't just couldn't write it, and um, yeah, Laidlaw was the boy repping the northeast there. Well, you, <laughs> like, and he, you he both did, got he pictures in freestyle. Yeah, I got yeah. a, I got a like a half page pick and the uh, like doing it. So I'm just Flat, imagining you know? that was part of the the practice. wasn't wasn't in the contest. Yeah, but it's odd because it looks like there's a lot of people there. Yeah, so, no, it's quite a nice picture. Of it. It's odd. odd. Probably one of my favourite. Oh, is picks. it? Yeah. Well, it's because it's, well, it's in freestyle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And when it came out, me, and Terry got picked. Terry was on the cover. Like, Fuck it up. So, <clears throat> so we were both living in Saudi, like, and then that magazine. I, I can't remember if somebody sent us all. Yeah. We, we might not have seen it until we come back to the UK. That you was know? good for the local crew, that wasn't it? Yeah, it was classic. Yeah. You know? and, and, and from like my like my little thing about it, like my favourite skater was Hasoi. Yeah, and Hussoy is like on the opposite. Oh right, yeah. So yeah. Like, oh, that's, that's a nice picture of him. That's pretty well. cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that. So, um, <clears throat> and but also yeah, like notice the that you ha the the way that you ride, rode back then was quite like it. The, everything was in the right place, if you know what I mean. Like like what we were saying earlier, it, where it just I, I guess just a little just, bit about you wanted to like. Like you, you were tabling and everything was in there, wasn't it? Like your knees were together, yeah, like people do yeah, it now, and yeah, everything yeah. was kind of like precise and just it, yeah, a lot of things. attention to detail for for the early point. Like that was early. I think it's just being aware of what what felt good, you know. Yeah, that's what I thought that's it was, kind of was a, That's you know, like and and, and the motor air. It well. maybe summer, summer. Yeah, I mean, like 
I think you just you take influence from some of the stuff you say, and you think, oh, I really like that. And you think, why do you, why do you like it? And, you know, that that sort of uh, that sort of turn down sort, sort of yeah. thing. Like was just something that I like. I'd seen something like it somewhere, and just thought oh, I was going to try and mimic that and get a bit of style in it. You know, because um, it was years before anyone started doing that again. But like, I remember you. you whoosh, that was like one yeah, of your things. Just, wasn't but it was. Like, I, I think it was. It, it 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 came back in a little bit when when like kind of like Ruben was was people were doing video parts and yeah. skate parts and carbon airs and yeah. stuff. And it, it was just part of that style, wasn't it? But that's like ten years after. <clears throat> Yeah, it? at best, it's probably more than ten years after because Ruben didn't start getting a lot of coverage till the late nineties. Yeah, you were doing yeah. that in eighty seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of, um, yeah. Just, just little things and just little. I think just that being a, like aware of what you thought looked good or felt good. Yeah, um, and it was quite bizarre because it's just some of the pictures that I've seen of them, like. I never realised they were quite so high, you know. Or yeah. They, or they maybe don't look that high when you look at it, but when you if you if you pause it, yeah, it was like oh, that's pretty impressive. There's, that a, one. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple so. of good ones on BMX I think there was one on that Tizer footage that I watched yeah, recently yeah. as well. <coughs> I've got a, yeah. I took a took a screen grab from it. It's like it's up at the top of the mm. uh, the the red rail. The, yeah. So it's like I think that that must be about you know tennis or something yeah. like that. So I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so, yeah. I didn't know that you broke your wrist at whole shot. Yeah, that's why, that's why I didn't manage to compete. I couldn't, literally couldn't. Did you know you broke your in hospital on that? And they... No, I didn't. I thought it was just spring. Oh, and you just and, fucked, uh, yeah. and I was thinking, all right, I'll just wait till the end of the day, see if I can ride. And literally couldn't grab my bars. It was like just, you know, intense. And, um, Yes, there's just no way up the ride. Um, ended up because I I travelled down there with Terry. Um, we came down on the train, stayed in the hotel. But there was a there was a mini bus load of guys oh. came down <laughs> from uh, <laughs> the crew. Came. And because because I was like just messed up, um, jumped in the van, went back home with them, um, and actually shared the driving part oh. part of the way back. Like there was only one guy who came from the uh, the, the centre, um, and there was I think I was the only person who who could drive as well at the time. <clears throat> so I shared the driving with him. I remember getting home, and literally like you know when you try and you need to sleep, yeah, but you're in such intense pain you couldn't. So I had to go up the uh, up the hospital, got an X ray, and sure enough, like three quarters of the way through, cracked. And it was like fuck. <laughs> like, well, was you? You was obviously in pro then. Yeah. So you'd have yeah, against yeah. those guys. Yeah. That, that's the that's that's, that's the that frustrating. Was like pretty thing. frustrating. Yeah. And that's, I was quite shocked to get a, definitely shocked to get a picture in the mag because I didn't even like enter the comp. Yeah. So, but and, and gutted because me and Laidlaw had like pushed and pushed and pushed like each other. And you know, like I mean, Laidlaw's writing uh, there was like pretty off the off the map, wasn't it? <laughs> Laidlaw the year before, like <clears throat> we, I, we, me and a couple of friends, we we didn't go to the BFA contest or anything at that point in time, so we didn't know nothing. And I remember Laidlaw rolling out that DP Firebird, Jim Firebird, <laughs> and we were all like, "Oh, oh you know, this guy's bike!" We were like, you know, totally yeah, yeah. like ripping him, like, oh, yeah, nice bike, mate!" And then he just fucking went. Wah! Yeah, that was. I was at the eighty-six one. Yeah, quite di- ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, he 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 was insane, and he's got. There's some great shots from there, and like just so good. The yeah. one one foot and stuff like mind blowing. And again, like, I remember riding that comp when I was. I was the first first comp where I just started riding TNC because I'd I'd just come back from <laughs> Norway. Uh, we'd been out in the October, yeah. So we'd just come back like it was October and November, it's so a winter time, and then whole shot, and I'm like there on a street beat and all the TNC gear, and I just looked like shit. <laughs> so, again, just embarrassing, like you know. But then again, the memorable part was like, see, like Steve's like kind of like, and I, uh, you know, like I knew like people would probably be taking the piss because he had a DP and stuff yeah. like that, but I was like, yeah. Just watching for. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. some like a few of the guys that rode. This guy that used to ride with us, lad called Joe Carney. He was at, like shit hot on a quarter pipe. He had a good style, but yeah, like we didn't have a lot of money, so yeah. we, uh, like DP was an affordable, yeah, yeah, totally. reasonable bike, you know. So yeah. it was like, 
And like, but yeah, I don't give a shit what the bike is. Yeah, no, no, I still do the airs, you know. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. But <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong. I then he, then tits, he, you know? he had the GT for that whole show, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, the pink the, one. The, yes. Yeah, my. So uh, was he never sponsored? I think he got. Um, yeah, he got he got he got some kind of Amico deal with oh, okay. with, with Mackie for a while, but I'm not sure what happened with that. Don't know. Is that, I do recall him entering some of the nationals with the Amico gear, oh, right. you know. Um, but I don't know where that was that, probably. Pre, was that that would have been pre pre BP been, probably? Uh, no, I think it might have been in oh, between. It might have been in between. So it might have just been a short short period of time yeah. because by the time the whole shot he was on that GT. That was 87. Though, yeah, yeah and I'm pretty sure he, he wrapped it after the whole shot. He quit off that, yeah? Pretty much, I. I mean, it was it was in bad times at that point. Like, <coughs> I think, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I think it was a, like a, a combination of that and... Um, I can't, I can't recall. He's, he's probably told us a hundred times what... what what went on, but yeah. might just been an age thing Shit where you happens, just yeah. you, you, you decide you're going to get start going to the pub and stuff like that. Yeah, um, and you you know you know you're working and stuff, so you slowly just get out of it, don't you? Especially if the like if the sparks kind of like <coughs> dying out, it's it's hard, don't it? I mean, it, it was like disappointing because I like <laughs> I came, but I mean I was away for quite a while, but then we came back to the UK and he'd stopped riding, and, and a few of the guys had stopped and it had just started sort of um, slowing down a little bit, yeah. you know. <clears throat> but yeah, frustrating not to have like somebody as good as him there yeah. to ride with on a daily basis and push you as well. Because like my my riding improved. Like I, you know, I was quite happy with how how I rode at the at the worlds and, and whatnot. But we were influenced by like Matt so much, and 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 also like you know Mike. If you look at if you look at Mike and Greg at the Tizer Worlds and, and Lee. And everything and Andy, what yeah. they were doing, they were all pushing, and that was Lady yeah, Lay Low's group. Yeah. So like we knew we had to step up and start pushing it further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, like, that's uh, one of the things that Mike said was like, he, he just used to, I dread riding against Laid Law because he knew he had to like go full power. Yeah, because like, he could relax. He, you know, Laid Law was a little bit like um, a little bit like Peppy, and that he'd hack at the ramp. But Laidlaw would bring it in smooth as well. Yeah, yeah. And Pepe was a, another little, like, anvil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, Greg also could like laugh pretty good. Like, yeah, he was yeah. Like, Greg was. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Lee Lee was occasionally. Yeah. By then, Andy was still a little bit. Yeah, heavy, he was an anvil. Yeah. But but like you know the stuff that Andy oh, was yeah, doing. Yeah, was yeah, that's insane. Yeah. It, it, that's what it was like. There was two sides almost. Like you just went up and yeah. you. Yeah. And you, then you then, I, it, then right? I think it was like the year after when when Lee and Scott and everybody started like smoothing it out yeah. as well. You know, get and, and going high. Yeah. You know, like uh it's pretty cool. Well what did you think of like the R A D sort of stuff that was going on? With, like the the streetwear and the, the sort of Nick Phillips kind of <sighs> Dave, well, Dave Curry really. That I think. Well, Dave, Dave, Dave so like, yeah, Dave kind of had it with the actions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I remember that 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 shoot on top of the garage uh, was the first time. I, was it the first time I met Dave? No, I would have met Dave. Oh, he, he he was at the first BMXB. Okay, yeah, pretty sure he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he but was. I probably wouldn't have spoke spoke to him. I would have been because he was GT as well. Yeah, I would have yeah. been. I would have been too like nervous to speak to him. Probably, I was like, oh, the very first beat, you know. Yeah. And then he, he, he was at that uh, photo shoot and he was like, he was such a nice bloke and he was like, talent, like I was like, I love you. He had this hoodie on, this like bright fucking sunny pink. pink hoodie yeah, yeah. with like the action zone graphics on there. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool that. And he was like, oh, I'll give you one. So he, he actually, he gave us he that gave one. gave you a talk, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, I was like, Dave was like, yeah, he's cool as you know. So that was like early on. So it was pretty cool, and the RAD stuff, like, I was kind of like, I don't know. Um, I just, you know, get get over yourselves, man. You know, yeah. <laughs> like uh, the, you know, the burning the license thing. I just thought it was all a bit more like, you know, the reality of that was just about stirring up a bit of. Well, a bit of, bit do of you like, know the background of that? Uh, not really. Right, so it shed a different light on it. Like I, I quite 
at the time I wasn't sure what I thought, but like, and then afterwards I was like, yeah, fuck it, it's cool. But like recently I saw, I think it was Alex Leach was telling me the story. Yeah. And um, so they arranged Mons, they wanted to do a jam at Mons. Oh uh, yeah, I think I, think I do know that. I think, BFA. I think Alex has told me this yeah. in the past. Yeah. They told the BFA, oh, we, we're going to do a jam on this day so, you know, don't, so that we don't clash with any of your contests. Right, right. And then the BFA saw what was going on saw it as a, basically what I interpret as saw it as a threat right and then organised a BFA contest the same weekend right so that's why right. they was right. all pissed off yeah so I could see that yeah yeah and then I think maybe it's just a little bit of the the, the magazine creating something <laughs> yeah, for yeah. like which yeah. you know whatever but I, I just saw it as like you know as much as like some of the contest series were cheesy and this and the other it's like and it was the you know, like, yeah, a bunch of parents doing it, but you kind of knock them for doing that, you know. No, so, no. so I didn't, if I'm honest, I didn't have an opinion about it either way, but I didn't feel any allegiance to burn me BFA yeah. license if I had one at the time. I don't yeah. know. If I, I, I think that, <laughs> I think that we're better off that that happened than, it, than if it didn't happen, though. Like, I, I, could see, I could see, I could see, you know, both sides, it, yeah. Uh, no, but I, I, I would, yeah, if I'd organised a jam, I'd be pissed off if the BFA had done that as yeah. well. It's like, but, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so. I can see, like, these guys in the BFA, they're just trying to... It's kind, it's kind, I think it's right. kind of like what, you know, what, you know, I think the BMX being what it is, freestyle being what it is, whatever, it's like, you know, it, it needs to be kind of like you know the, the series that we're trying to support at the minute it's yeah. like we've got to be very conscious of what else is on yeah. because you want to get as many people to your event as what you can you know it's like um so you you don't want to be stepping on people's time yeah, Cre it's, creating it's, a divide basically you know is, is what, um but then also if you're the adults of the can you bear in <laughs> mind that these guys are the kids organizing the half pipe jam yeah they're 17 or yeah whatever. yeah yeah uh, and you're the adults. You should be the ones who are level thinking, not those guys. Oh, absolutely, so. yeah. I mean, if if that was done in that way, malicious. Oh, it's not malicious, is it? But like, just it's a bit stupid, really. Yeah. You know, and it it wouldn't. You know, I couldn't see why they would ever see it as a threat. I, so. I think it would. Uh, it's, just I, bit, I don't know. But I think nuts. it would have been Hawkins that, that would have. Because he had the issue with with them with the the guys yeah, that yeah, did that job. Yeah. So, so I'm guessing, and, and then his influence on yeah those other um, personalities within yeah, the BFA exactly. probably was yeah there. So that's that's probably a little I bit would, closer. Yeah, to it, I but, but a bit yeah. not really though. But yeah, but yeah, burn, <laughs> burn your passport, yeah, burn your burn your license, license whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and that you know that whole that that whole thing like that that kind of. A little bit punk rock kind of like image look thing. I was like, not no, that was new to me because I was doing that like when I was like 10, 11 years old, you yeah. know. <laughs> so it was like been there, done that a little yeah. bit, but you know, whatever. Everybody's entitled to their own style, and whatever. Yeah. Well, it's, it's good to have the different characters. I mean, mm, yeah, and there yeah. always was those different characters that existed. Like, I mean, Dave Slade was one that stands out with his own style and thing going on. Didn't give a shit well. What yeah, no, he thought. was. Yeah, he was proper. Yeah, <clears throat> you know him very well. Uh, not not really well, but he was just one of those like approachable people. Yeah, who, it you know would always make that effort and um, time to talk to you because yeah, it's not not necessarily the northern thing. It was just the, that you know that he was quite a good dude, wasn't he? Dave? Like, he's a nice guy. Really yeah, nice so it was Dave. I, I I just think again, really early on. Um, like early days, like Dave and some of his pals from that area, like well, people that we'd met early on, you know, the cons and spoke to every yeah. time you seen them. So um, the the Welsh guys were were the same. The they were like yeah, really. Andy and Mark yeah. and the, the, their crew of friends. They were always. It was like you you'd see the they'd be the first ones to come and. Yeah, you know, when you when you got to any of the events, you know, so it was like you know, there's good scenes. Yeah, so I saw Andy last year. Uh, it was good. I mean, it's the first time I've seen him in thirty years or yeah. something. You know, it was like, and uh, that was like. Where did nice you see, to him? see him? Down like, at well, um, sure. that Cardiff. Okay. Uh, like was the last in the half pipe series yeah. last year. So, so I, yeah, so it's just um, you you know the characters that you you come across. Yeah, like it's uh, especially then because they. 
<clears throat> and Eric as as well. Eric, you know, is 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 like is kind of like this bizarre you know, character that he kind of seems as one of the nicest guys you've ever met. You know, it's like, you know, you're, you're, it's like I think early days you'd be a bit wary. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly, but, yeah. but he's like he's such a nice bloke. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of outcasts back, back sort of as, as BMX progressed through the early times. Yeah, well, it was, which is nice. I, I quite yeah, like that. Yeah. Now, did you ride uh, any of the half pipe contest that was going on? Sort of. I think the last one I rode out was that was that outdoor one, and yeah, I think it was it was like Mansfield. who was like okay, yeah, on yeah. That. Um, um, yeah, I think that was the, uh, that was the Powell demo one. Yeah, yeah. Remember that? I, yeah. Somebody only told me this recently. Yeah, it was a skate. Like, yeah, it was. A, yeah. It, was a, it was. It was. I think the uh, Bones Brigade That's it, yeah. tour or something <clears> like that. <throat> and I, I think that was just before I first went to the states. So it would have been ninety, I think. Yeah, that's it. Um, I think that might might have been the last half pipe one on a road like comp. Maybe I'm not sure. You remember how that was? I think I, I placed top three. I think. Oh yeah, you done well. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a there was a picture in a mag somewhere I remember, vaguely, but uh, yeah and uh, yeah, I, I went to states shortly after that. I think I, I might have been riding. I rode for Bully for a bit. Oh, okay. Well, it was like the UK. Whoever yeah. was bringing in the UK sure, it was I like. <laughs> it was. Um, what was, no, it, John it, was Terry? it was. Uh, that was something to do with Noble. Oh, you might be right. The first time it came in, yeah. because because it was me and Simon. Okay. And it was it was just when they were pulling that Team Extreme thing together, I think. Yeah. And I went down and did some shows in um was it Olympia? Oh right. Is that is that one of yeah, the right. yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> So I was on bully for that and uh, that just didn't it, it it didn't fit. Didn't like the, the the timing of it and just who I was a, as a person at the time it didn't feel right but um, and then that that contest might have been shortly after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little right, bit. Yeah. So it was on that same. It was on the same half pipe. And uh, so I think I did all right. But then went to the states for the first time and fucking uh, had an amazing time. Uh, but like had a really bad like accident. I had a bad crash just before I came home. Like. Uh, Doing ice pick grinds down rails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what happens next. <clears throat> Face plant the concrete. Yeah, catch the um, peg. Caught the peg on the uh, upright. Yeah. Boom. And uh, woke up basically neck brace on, looking <laughs> up into <laughs> looking up into a light, and it was like a fucking X-ray. So I was in hospital. Um, I've been out, like basically went face down, smashed my face on the ground. Like um, <clears throat> Jenkins was there. It's a guy, this American guy that I met, um, Rob. He was an old fucking seventies, eighties BMX from way back in the day. And uh, he, it was we'd just been out, just doing loads of street riding, filming and that, just messing around. And this was like late in the evening. And uh, did did that. Woke up in hospital front tooth smashed in half, wow. neck brace on, x-ray thing coming on, face scabbed up, feeling like crap, and I was like, oh, okay, what am I where, do? where did you go got in America? No, got no one, got no one, to, I was, this was in San Diego. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, that, that, that slowed things down from then on, you know, like, yeah. uh, like sort of, uh, I came back from that trip, and it was when Hoffman did the flare. Mansfield, yeah. Yeah, so I was at that event, I was okay. there, but <clears throat> couldn't ride. Still, I'm still like concussed, like a couple of weeks after, you know. And, uh, but yeah, it just kind of like, I, I don't know, I just took, just slowed down a bit riding wise. Yeah. Though. Like, you know. Well, the whole uh, thing was getting slow at that point as well. It, it was, but I was still like kind of riding, but I think the, the contest thing it, it just unclicked, yeah. sort of, you know, for me. Um, and the uh, like, I don't know. It was frustrating, not having um, the the right like you know like a ramp that you could fully push it on properly. Yeah. You know, that was getting frustrating. And and again, I think that that period of time, the uh, you know like um, laid load stopped. Yeah. And 
like so there was nobody riding vert and so the, the majority the only people i'd be riding vert with were skaters which was kind of all right for a while but then it's it's it, it kind of holds you back and then like obviously like we built we had the half pipe in in the uh center in washington then yeah and because that was like nine foot it was like close up to the roof like and <laughs> the gaps in the in the uh the, the skylights were it was like a more difficult thing to negotiate and also like riding a half pipe you always tend to a do a little bit of carving and, and i had a few like full-on like into the side you, of the skylights and yeah? straight oh yeah a few times i mean we used to bounce off that roof all the time but get away with it you know <laughs> but uh like i had a few like pretty bad offs like front wheel in and then straight to the flat bottom under the chest like broken ribs and stuff like that so it was like just getting that just that was just a bit frustrating yeah yeah that's that's yeah that's, and, uh, that's that. it would have been nice to have like all right well get a bigger facility get a yeah. bigger, you know, but it was just not possible to, uh i couldn't afford to finance it you know <laughs> how, did, how did that come about that that half pipe in there? Well, that, that was well so obviously towards the late 80 like people started skating again that second skateboard boom yeah. had come in so because we had the quarter pipes it would always attract a load of older skaters and stuff and all of a sudden skating was bigger than BMX. Oh, yeah okay and uh again my my pal andy lincoln that i mentioned who was, was originally a, a, a racer um he'd got into skating and uh he, he used to spend a lot of time up in livingston skating the, the skate park there and he had a girlfriend up there and um he, he'd come down and him and his dad basically built the majority of this half pipe and um i always remember like the, the just as it was getting needing the final sort of putting the surface and the skin on shitload of skateboarders came up for the weekend from all over the country and it got finished in that night and oh, then yeah. they were just sessioning all night you know and that was that from then uh it was it was more like you know like an indoor skate park yeah. as opposed to a bmx facility yeah so you was the um, only one on it on a bmx i guess uh, there was there was still the odd couple who would occasionally come down and ride um but they weren't they weren't like really into like riding vert yeah. you know um they were like still like a little bit more flatlandy yeah. or just doing stuff it was like a lot of vert skaters so you had like rocker yeah who was a pro like pro skater um he he rocker was originally i knew him because he used to ride a bmx oh, okay so i'd always known him um i mean just bizarre some bizarre stories like you know um the first the first trip to the states rocker had been out um in texas with some of his skating pals and i always remember him contacting me um i don't know how he contacted us even i must have given him um my pal's number before we went it was way before mobile phones yeah and i get a call off him like uh, at, at rob's house and he's like, oh, i want to come over to la um uh, i want to come over to San like california is there any chance i can stay with you and your pal you know and like he said, i was like well, why what i thought you were with all your skating he says oh yeah but i'm having too hard of a time they're all roughing it and <laughs> So, uh, so we ended up picking him up, like, and he he stayed with us about five days in the states, and that we ended up going and uh, riding, um, you know, Danny Way's ramp, all right, out there. Um, but like, the the majority of people that I spent time with by that time in the early nineties were like probably skaters, it's like. Is it yeah, the well, facility that was, that was all was yeah. skaters yeah. in there. So because he had the picture, you had the picture in like. Yeah, I that think was, that was the only that picture was, in that issue yeah, of RAD. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then, then Rocker had to pick. Because I knew, picture. again, TL, they'd been up in Scotland doing a photo shoot. For, it's, I don't know if there'd been a skating contest somewhere or whatever it was. Yeah. It was just on the, on the I knew they were coming down because yeah. I'd get a call. And uh, it was, they were like, oh, TLB wants to shoot some pictures. Are you, oh, uh, cool. Like, okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 that, I'll, I'll, I think that was a solitary BMX shot in that <laughs> issue, wasn't it? Possibly, I don't yeah, know. I, I, don't, was, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if I've got it. I don't think I've got I it. Think so, I've got it. Still, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty cool. It was nice. And then they built a spine ramp there as well. Yeah, we had the spine ramp, and it, it was like, I mean, you know, I just spent. I'd be there every day, and it was like, you know, ride the half pipe, ride the spine ramp. Yeah, yeah. that spine ramp was, it was pretty. It was only about it was, five foot. It was whippy or something. I remember. It wasn't. Wasn't too bad but it was it was about five foot so it was like easy to do stuff i was doing like you know um 
360 nose picks over yeah. it, um, look back 360s over it, flat 360s over it. But, that but was it was advanced. easy because it was yeah, like... But that was advanced at that point pretty, in time, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. But in 90s, It wasn't, yeah, it was like 1991, something like that. So, um, the only put out... So, Atkins used to come up and ride that with us. Okay. And he, he learned tail whips on that half pipe. He learned oh, his wow. first tail whips on that half pipe, yeah. So, he's like, yeah, his dad used to just drive him up and they'd stay for a weekend and... Where were they from? Were they from up there? Somewhere? Leicester. Oh, Leicester, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. Way down. And uh, there was one... one one year, um, round about that same time, maybe ninety one ish, where uh, um, I organised a like a big skate and bike show, and it was just in a leisure centre in a place called Hexham, which is kind of west of Newcastle, about twenty miles west. It's like um, a little kind of rural kind of out, out in the countryside type place. Filled this leisure centre up, like they they sold tickets, filled it up with like five hundred people, and we did this show or two. Oh, yeah. Two two twelve foot Vincent ramps, so it was like a, set up like a half pipe, and I was like, there was me. It was supposed to be me, Atkins, um, Scott Carroll, Brian Willis, Brian, Brian Willis, yeah. Willis, and uh, and all me, all the vert skaters who used to come and skate that ramp were going to be coming just a session, and yeah. do like a skateboarding show thing as well, and. Um, I was like, it got it got to about an hour before we were going to open the doors and like, because people have bought tickets to come yeah. and see this thing and it's like, and I was like, what the fuck, what's going to happen? And it's like, no skaters turned up. Atkins had broken his collarbone and so they'd all gone, driven back. Well, he, he had to go to the hospital and then come back down to Leicester. So there was only me and Scott. So I was like, how are we going to like do a show like to all these people with just me and him? About half an hour before the doors are going to open, all my mates come down, all the, all the local skateboarders, oh, okay. and then all of the Scottish lot, Davy Phillips, Stanaz, all of those guys who told us that, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, <laughs> it was just like an entourage, and they all piled in, uh, Neil Dans was there, yeah, so, man, yeah. and they just sessioned it for like an hour or so, like, you know, like, warmed up the whole, the whole show, yeah. thing, got all the crowd going, and then me and Scott Carroll did a show at the end of it, it was like... Yeah, I'll take that. That's cool. That works <laughs> out in the end, yeah. <laughs> so it's like for me, the, the whole I've always been into the skating thing. Like, yeah. Kind of like as soon as that second era of the skating started coming around, and like we get some of the old boys coming down trying to use the, the half, uh, the quarter pipes, and before we had the half pipe. Yeah. Like some of the BMX would be like, oh, I don't want to let these guys in. I'll take it. And I was like, no, nah, I want just just get on with it. You know? It's yeah. Like, go with it. Same. Yeah. Same thing. And it's. I, I like. I like. Yeah. At that point in time, skating looked so much better than BMX. <clears throat> it was. Yeah. It was so oh, well, it's like, it's kind of always had its own. It's, yeah. It has its own thing going on. Yeah. It, yeah. it doesn't follow anything, does yeah. it? That's, Especially that's, that's, then, that's, that's like, a, well, yeah. It came then, back with such like rebellion. Like, yeah, but so, so I mean, powerful. yeah. Even even part of skating now, you look at it. I mean, there's some parts of it where you think it's really corporate. Yeah. But it's there's still so much of it got its own thing going on, yeah. like, you know. It's like, and I think it's 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 kind of always been like that. But I just, I just if you have got a facility, it's there to be used. Yeah, it? yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, that goes with same for BMX, doesn't it? Like, <coughs> same thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, so it's good. <clears throat> so how did you end up doing the shows in Saudi? Yeah, so. <sighs> So Terry had a, a little bit of a previous um, stint doing shows with the, the 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 guys that go around doing the stunt shows on the cars oh, and the two right. wheel driving yeah. and all that type of stuff, and then I can't remember if it was Terry that got asked it or if it was me and um, that got approached by possibly some something through no Peter Noble might have got, right. got in touch with through somebody else and this German guy was setting up this tour which was supposed to go to um, Saudi for three months then come back across Europe um, Greece it was yeah. something like that but so Saudi was the first stop and we ended up there and we ended up staying there for like six or seven months, something oh, really? like that. Yeah, and that kind of went sour because the German guy tried to rip the Arab guy off, and oh, all right. so it was like, yeah, it was all. I mean, it was it was it was a hell of an experience, and it was a massive education. 
um, you know, so a hell of a lot of good times and some pretty shitty times, you know. Yeah. Big learning curve, you know. Um, yeah, always always question, you know, who's who's sort of like um, who's covering your your sort of legal aspects and whatnot, and uh, we we weren't notified that as much as you need a visa to get in, you need a visa to get out. Oh, all right. So we were kind of like almost trapped there, you know, for a, a while. So we had to wangle all that out. And yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah quite we, frightening, isn't it? Yeah, 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 of course it, yeah. of course it is, yeah. Yeah, so it was like big learning curve, you know. So, but yeah, yeah. it's one of those things that sort of uh, shapes you, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so did you ever stop riding BMX at all? No, uh, I, I've never not had a bike. Um, and there's never a period where I thought, right, I'm quit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but I think, like, sort of the late, towards the late 90s, I, I kind of took a bit of a dip where I didn't ride sort of regularly. Yeah. And that was that. Was that. And it's, it's really sort of since then, it's kind of off on, off on, off on. But yeah. I've always had bikes, you know, and sometimes I've, I've picked it up and done a little bit more, you know. And yeah. Kind of like, sort of like, say, at the minute, life takes over doesn't it? yeah so, it does yeah and you know and again well when it's winter when it's cold it's like it's kind it's of it's hard, yeah. hard to motivate yourself to get out but you know it's a, it's again it's just building you know getting back into a routine or not necessarily a routine or just the habit of oh that's what i do on a weekend that's yeah. what i get up in the morning and go and do you know because you guys now you you guys have got a little thing where you ride before work have you have you oh have we you used to we, we used to do it a couple of years ago the, well, yeah, it was a while. That okay. was some years ago that like, but but um, and we like me and Laidlaw and a guy called Mick Stevenson. What ten years ago now? We actually we got a we got a little setup, got a got a unit like a oh, warehouse, really? and we we salvaged this ramp which was like stuck in the middle of a field in the middle of uh, Northumberland. So. Um, it was one of those like rare unit kind of metal I've seen pictures of it, yeah. frames, and we ended up. We went up there. We uh, we bought it off the the local council because it was it was their biggest nightmare. Because all the local kids used to just go and sit on it and cause hassle yeah. and drink and give give Good the locals life. grief yeah. and stuff like that. So we we managed to buy it and uh, we went and chopped it down, brought it back to Newcastle on the back of a, of a high ab truck and uh, rebuilt it. Put more flat bottom in, put two foot of vert on it, which was a little bit ambitious. Two foot of vert, how high was it? Uh, it ended up 12 foot. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Yeah. so it was a 10 foot ramp, 10 foot transition, but when it was stuck in the field, it had been put together with like no flat bottom, but virtually like six foot of flat yeah. bottom. And um, it didn't go, it didn't have any vert on it, it just went. Just ten, was it ten foot ten transition foot. and ten foot. Yeah, and that was that. So we thought, oh, I wouldn't do something with that. So just um, laid those welding skills, <laughs> put it back together, put a wooden surface on top of the metal surface. <laughs> um, and I, and the, I think at the time we'd, we'd come down to Corby to ride it, 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 it oh, yeah, up yeah, there yeah. a little bit. So we thought we'll build something which is a step closer to that. That was the that was the um, the, the kind of reasoning behind that. But it was uh, it was a little bit. Step too far at the twelve. Foot foot. Yeah, the, you know, six inches or a foot of her yeah. off the ten would have been far better for us at the time because just just the strength of pumping the ramp that big when you've had She's a bit gnarly, of a, when it's... you've had a when you've had a break away from it, you realise how how much fitness and strength you need to ride a vert ramp, you know. Um, and it's, it's when you when you start getting the jelly thighs on like you know when you like, the couple with the adrenaline and the, the but, kind of no, like the first two two knowledge stuff. i mean yes yeah, you, you, if you do if you get in if you get yourself into it and you're doing it all the time it's you pick it back up yeah. but i don't know that i was ever going to get 10 foot again yeah you know but it's like we've got a few sessions where we're getting up there a little bit but not nowhere near like and what happened to that then the <clears throat> it was it was only ever going to be temporary in in the uh, the unit that I had because the the guy who had the the, the site he was redeveloping it all, so this 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 kind of old huge shed thing that we rented, um it was it was getting pulled down. All right. And we had an option to shift the ramp just somewhere else on that site, but it would have been outdoors. 
which was I was like, yeah, let's keep it there. Um, <clears throat> but there was a guy who's got an indoor skate park um, down the coast, South Shields, a place called Override, which is a great little skate park. Um, they decided that they wanted to put the ramp in the car park there. So I was like, oh, so we did that. We chopped it up again, took yeah. it down, rebuilt it. But we never really rode it, hardly, you know. And uh, it was like, for me, it was a mission to get to. It was just that, like, whereas when it was in Newcastle, I could yeah. finish work come down and it would have been more suitable but that so yeah it was a, just one of those things yeah. you just went by the bars dwindled yeah it's a lot of work for like ended up with nothing and i and, and it like that two foot of vert you didn't change that huh? now we built it back up like that. Oh. <laughs> that's when we should have realized yeah and, and maybe we would have wrote it more i don't know but uh and i and, and sort of sort of laid low got a little bit more into his mountain biking and stuff okay. then i think so that's fair enough you know yeah you know, it's pity like, but yeah. But it was it was good to own a half pipe for for a while. Yeah, um, yeah. You know. And then what was the other? I seem to remember pictures of another ramp which was in like a looked like a town hall or something. <coughs> was it like a dome? Yeah. Oh, that would have been <coughs> so. <coughs> that's that that was a place called Spanish City, which is uh, in a town, which is a seaside town, Whitley Bay, and um, the dome is just this this old building that's been there forever. Um, there used to be like a big fairground on the side of it. So in the 90s, about 96, there's, there's some guy who was involved in a bike shop decided he wanted to build a skate park and um, the word went round and I was the person to speak to. Oh, right. Really? And um, <clears throat> he kind of asked us to come down and have a look at it and, it, and it, it had been converted into one of those like indoor laser quest type places. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it had yeah, loads yeah. of like... The building had been just totally messed Fuck with, and like, yeah, so they had to gut all that out. So I went down as it had been gutted out, and he was like, I want to put a skate park in here, and I'm going to have like a bar and a diner and all of this, and have like a bit of a venue, you know. And I was like, all right, cool. And I was like, it's not really big enough for a good skate park, you know. But he, he was adamant, he, yeah. he'd already spent the money gutting the place out. And that. So I'll, I'll be able to design something for you and, and we'll be able to build it, but you know, it's, it's going to be limited and restricted. So anyway, I set about, put as much in as what I could like in the design and uh, he was like, yeah, go ahead and build it if you think that's what will be what the current people, kids will ride and stuff like that. And that's what we did. So What, what was it? Um, it was like a, it was like a, mega combo spine ramp oh, thing okay. with different so maybe like, i've seen pictures of a hip maybe so yeah there was a okay. there was a there was a there was a couple of hips and a like a curved sort of like jump box um for some reason built a roll in christ knows why i put yeah. that in like, um i think it was looking at the the beginner element of yeah, it okay. all you know and it it was only like a six foot mini and the rolling went up a couple of foot or something yeah. like that so there's a mini spine with a hip, 45 degrees, and there was quarter pipes on the back walls with like a channel in, stuff like that. Oh, and then good circuit, yeah. little, little smaller ramps up on yeah. the different levels and that, but the place was really limited and restricted. And, um, so I did that. Um, we did like a few events there, like uh, the opening event, people like Alex and... Um, a bunch of guys like Ian and all the Scottish guys come down sort of like for a few of the events um, got well you know sessioned and whatnot. It became a bit of a music venue uh, instantly is the, you know the, the first thing when the word went around some of my pals were, uh, were BMXers who were at uni in, in Newcastle so they had pals who were into like DJing and doing all that type of stuff. And that was the type of vibe that they wanted to create there. So I instantly had like dozens of people saying, yeah. oh, we want to come and do this. We want to come and do that. So we did all that kind of stuff. I stayed involved with that for a couple of years. I, I, I stayed involved for about a year and then it existed for about another year or two afterwards. And it sounds cool though. Was it good? That was yeah, good it was, yeah, I mean, it was it like, it wasn't really too good, bad. Yeah. It was just, it was just a little bit overly ambitious for like, I think to to it might have worked in a, a little bit more affluent area. Yeah. Because they really struggled financially, you know, after the second year, I think. And um, <laughs> I think in a second phase, he put a vert ramp in. Wow. 
and it killed it. Yeah, that would kill obviously, it, yeah. you know, um, just because there wasn't. There's not enough. Other than the vert ramp, there wasn't, and I think it just very quickly. Yeah. You know, and what happened shortly after that, I think one of because there used to be like a few arcades just on the neighbouring buildings, you know. And uh, what happened shortly after that, the ramps got chopped down, and some other guy jumped on it and put a few mini ramps in his arcade. Oh, you know, okay. I think he like sort of bank bank rolled it. it was, like, yeah. pretty made a bit off it, you know, because there was a lot of there was a lot of inline skating going on and stuff like that. Oh, then. so it was that point in skating. Like it was, it, when it when it got shifted, it, it didn't really it wasn't BMX was riding or anything oh. like that. So yeah, but I wasn't I wasn't that was probably my little bit of downtime of not really riding a lot. Yeah. You know, late nineties, early early noughties, a little bit too much of the the night club and yeah, okay. that kind of thing. But yeah, but that yeah, that, that's definitely that. There's a <coughs> Spanish city is like quite a well known um, landmark. Uh, it's, it's it's definitely mentioned in one of uh, Dire Straits songs. Oh really? Fuck knows which one. I don't know. I'm not really. They're not, they not, they not even Eng are they English. Yeah, I think he's like in. I, thought, I always thought that America. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. No, yeah, you're probably right. I think, What's like, his name? Mark, Mark Noffler. Yeah, is it? Is it? And he could even have a con northeast connection. Oh, okay, I didn't maybe, even know that. Maybe. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, and you you're still riding now, obviously. Yeah, I mean, just as I say, like I'll, I, you know, I still like getting getting on the bike and just rolling around the skate park and that, and it's yeah. I follow, I've, I've, I, I've always followed it, you know. I, yeah. You know, how could you do? Well, I just feel how could I do something so passionately for so long and then just not follow it, and then watching, you know, like seeing some, you know, some of the the guys coming up and knowing some of them from the northeast. Yeah. You know, like Kieran's like unreal. Um, I was going to ask know. you, did, did you know the NSF guys when that was? Born? Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. Um, I know all of them. Got them, them lads. I still still see them occasionally. Oh, really? You yeah. know, like uh, Ollie Olson, yeah, um, Chris Sutler, uh, James Newitt. Um Yeah, they're all good pals. I always, if cool, I see man. them, we always stop and have a chat. You know, and um, so, they're still riding. And yeah, that's whatnot. right. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, sat sat with uh, like pub that I drink in in Newcastle and sort of spot spotted Ollie with his son out riding, oh, you know, right. like, and I was like, well, you know, go on, that's cool to see that, you know, the street session and that, I was going to have a bit chat, say hello and say, oh, yeah, I'll catch up with you one day, I'll come out and see you. <laughs> <laughs> Were you following that when they, because they got quite a lot of coverage at one point? Yeah, I mean, they used to do all uh, their, their own, like the whole video thing and whatever, but, you know, in the... The good thing about that group was like they 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 there was always like one or two of them into, into doing like the little bit of filming and stuff yeah. and they were all quite creative guys, you yeah. know. Um so I think they, they kind of built their own thing. You know, the whole thing it, it was a success because yeah, they yeah. made it. It was like and and some bloody good writers as well, yeah. you know. Um uh, yeah, and they would always do like little events when they do the latest video and stuff. Yeah, so it was a, get along with some of them. It was them, known yeah. as the tr troublesome crew at, at one point, <laughs> there, but they definitely had their like yeah, a bit of a rowdy lot. Yeah, put them put put them the north back on the map up there, you know, like oh, in that area. Like uh, well, but you know the writing, you know, yeah, yeah, hands down, no, yeah. no doubt about it. And and there's bunch, there's there's you know there's, there's some of the guys now. There's a, there's a young guy, Billy McVicker. Who's who's seen, on real? He's, he's a small kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's, yeah. He's, does the he's, like, he's like ten or something, yeah. 11, eleven or something like that. And he's like, <clears throat> he's, he's just what? he's just fearless. He's and what like, park is that? He's he rides. Um, he rides. He rides the Newcastle, the one that I ride. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. Um, was, yeah. And he, he well, he's, but he's, his dad takes him all over. You yeah. know, he's like, and, you know, and you know, good on him. You know, yeah. it's like. It's, uh, it's Did impressive. his dad used to ride? Or he... Yeah, I think he had a bike, oh, okay. you know. Um, he's, he's, he's always had the interest, you know, yeah. he's followed it. So it's like, it's pretty good to see. He's a, you know, again, nice bloke. Um, and, and, but there's, 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 those are the guys that I know about, but there's loads more. There's other, like, when I see people, they'll say, oh, have you seen this guy right now? Yeah. Have you seen this? Oh, I haven't. You know, it's all like, yeah, he's, shit, he's what, still you know, strong. Like, you know, 
Yeah, it's like it's but it's again unless you go and at certain times yeah. you're not necessarily going to see it and you're not 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 necessarily going to know about it. So, and that, that's that's the part of life that it's different. You yeah. know, when you get my <laughs> it's like this point, other things take yeah, yeah, priority. Of course. Yeah, you got you got things and, uh, going on. You know, I, but you know, don't get us wrong. I, I still love just getting up. You know, weekend first thing in the morning, go and having a session. Um, Who did you ride with? Uh, it? By myself. Or by yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Generally, yeah. Laid like laws on the mountain bike. Too. Yeah, he, has, he hasn't gone on the BMX for a while. So, you know, he keeps threatening to. But and, but when he, and the thing is, when he does, he comes and gets on and it's straight in, straight in the bowl. Like, as, if, as, if guys. as if he's never had a break. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but, uh, and I, and I spend, a, spend a lot of time with, uh, with, my pal, with, with a guy called JK, who's yeah, yeah, from Jay, Liverpool. Yeah. Um, like me and him generally have a, a little trip off out to Spain, so we, we love riding that park in Malaga. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and it, it's just good to get away with the yeah, bikes and yeah, that. Yeah, totally. So. But it's, it's, you know, it's like it's, we still enjoy it and we still follow it. Yeah. So Jay, Jay's involved with the series as well, you know. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> just supporting that, but. He's, he's. I think his bike's become a bit of a clothes hanger. Really, as well. <laughs> so, whilst he's whilst he's off, he's off on a six month trip oh, around right, the world. Yeah, I've so. seen he's on a cruise or something. Yeah. But uh, what I so other than that, it's like this. As I say, like it would it would require a, a little bit of effort to hook up and you know certain times. There's there's like a, there's an indoor park in Darlington now, and which is like again a half an hour from Newcastle. And they're doing like a bike night, so oh. I'm threatened to make a, an effort to get down to that. Well, what's that part called? I, th- I think it's Full Motion. Okay, I don't yeah, know. So, and I think it just recently got refurbished, last, like the back end of last year. All oh, right. So I know, like, I know Billy goes down there and a few of the, the guys, like, so it's just a case of catching up. But for, as, as much as anything, it's nice to go and see people like you haven't seen for a while. Yeah, yeah, of course. They're still riding them now, so. Yeah, good. But yeah. And, uh, you know, like, um, some of my me, me original pals like Andy Lincoln who was also the, the guy that crossed over and skate and BMX and they still get on bikes occasionally oh, right. um, we'll go for a roll around and like see who falls off and dies yeah. first <laughs> um, and some of the some of the guys that rode with us in the early 90s um, they'll occasionally get on bikes like Jay Parker um, and the, you know a few of them so it's 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 kind of a bunch of old guys on bikes, but yeah, hey, do you know cool, what I mean? Right? It's like pretty cool. People enjoying themselves. It's, yeah, yeah. That's why you got on it in the first place. Right? <laughs> Too right. Good. And you're down for the the vert thing. Yeah, so the the UK half pipe series um, happening starting off this weekend in Caterham. So we've got four events. Um, June, I think, is Mount Hawk. Cornwall, that's uh, that's the long one. <laughs> then there's a little bit of a break over the summer, which I think is to cater for like other events and whatever. Yeah. And then back in September, I believe, in um, Cardiff at Spit and Sawdust. And then the last one's going to be possibly September, October in Blackpool. Okay, cool. That's the North event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still a three hour <laughs> drive for me. So. <laughs> Well, that's, you know, that's, that's always been the case. It's like, no. you know, if you're not willing to travel, you're yeah. not going to do it. So. That's a dedicated bunch of riding that vert ramp, though, as well. Yeah, so that's, that's a big people, ramp. People will come, don't they? So. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's good, good to see an independent sort of contest like that happening. Yeah, I mean, you know, hats off to, to, to Mike Mullen for pushing yeah. it on and keeping it going for another year. So, and all of those involved. So, got it supported. Nice. Cool, man. All right, we've, I think we're good. You're right. Yeah, it's fucking cool, huh? Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching or listening, whichever one you did. If you want to support the channel, like, comment, and subscribe. We also have some merch available. Soft goods, hard goods, union zines, new union speed roast coffee over on the Bicycle Union site. Go check it out. See you next time, jabronis.